Bev's Video Kingdom is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Bev's Video Kingdom is brought to you by the Sanford Village Beauty Spa Electrolysis Center and Pub. You've met the woman of your dreams. She's absolute perfection in nearly every way. Her laugh, her smile, her ample bosom. (laughs) You laugh at the same jokes, you cry at the same movies. The similarities are downright uncanny. Except there's one thing that she's got that you don't. A great big bushy bush! (laughs) That's right. It's a downright disaster down there. But don't you fret. The Sanford Village Beauty Spa Electrolysis Center and Pub is here to save the day. Why don't you treat your lady to a relaxing day of massage, mojitos, and making sure her hot fuzz is properly trimmed (laughs) or even zapped away entirely? And while she's being groomed, you can enjoy a few pints in our pub. Or maybe you can just drown your sorrows alone after she dumps you because you gave her the gift of a twat wax. (laughs) Thank you, Bradley. So come on down to the Sanford Village Beauty Spa Electrolysis Center and Pub. She'll thank you for it. <laughs> was that an ass slap with the cup or was it? What was, what that? was that? Swear box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it and I love it even more. Thank you. You gave me the thank you for putting thank the money you, Bradley. in there. I thought that was either like an ass slap or the sound of wax like pulling pubes out of <laughs> If you watch the movie, it's a swear jar. <laughs> Oh shit, oh shit. I mean, when you start a podcast, at some point you kind of like hope that you, you know, you have some success and some fun stuff. But I mean, I don't know if any of us could have imagined that the fact that we're sitting here getting ready to start a podcast on a great movie and we all have our own glassware personalized with our names. And inside this glass is some delicious last call brewed BVK IPA. Gentlemen, what? what? Toast of this. Let's just fucking cheers just this right cheers. off the bat. Yeah, I, let's cheers on this. Really, uh, as we raise our glasses, cheers. Cheers. audio like, medium. That was like the calmest opening we've had. Don't make me stand up. I, okay. It change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't come out going, hey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. God, it's so good. A little uh, low key there, bro. So <laughs> I thought that everything was a great success on Saturday. You guys, you guys have thoughts? I, mean, I drank fuck. so much of our beer. I told Scott when he got here and I just asked him a Oh, this question was just him and I, and uh, I just said, when you, like, shit on Sunday, did it smell <laughs> like, like BBK, BBK IPA? Yeah. Did any of you guys? Kind of more of that mango in this. The, the, more mango the, like than the stone fruit? Citrus. Like stone fruit? The stone fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Coming through. Coming I'm just curious, through. because it crossed my mind for a split second. Oh, and that, I'll just wow. I'll just leave it there. Like, I drank a lot of it. And I just, you know, we're talking about that green matter. We're, like, we brewed it, and oh, Walter, we're talking about the green matter, and, like, the fruit side of it and like that, I don't know. And you know when you drink like the the strong the strong beers and you taste it, you know, the next day and maybe two days later when you drink a shit ton of it. Oh yeah, when you taste your poop. I'm just saying, I don't think it's impossible that it could have smelled a little bit like our. And I'm I, just saying my I, poop smelled. Let me just great. say, I think it's highly it likely. Great. I don't think there's an impossibility. In and the I, I'm proud of that. So, <laughs> so I, I I'm gonna admit that like I drank some of our beer, but I also might have had a water bottle full of bourbon. Yeah, I might have uh, uh, apologized for that today when I when I ran into uh, the owner of Last Call. And uh, what do you mean apologize? Apologize for nothing. I love <laughs> what you. What did Last he say? Call? Was he like- I mean, just breaking, you know, all sorts of laws that could get them in trouble. Whatever. But that's all right. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they they had no knowledge of this. They can't police my water bottle. I think you could smell you from any part of that 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 tap room. I think you could pretty much smell your whiskey. <laughs> well, you know what? It was, it, it, it was a fragrance that everyone seemed to enjoy. So he needed uh, that rasp. On that bar, on that sure baritone, for that singing. That, but you know, I did. I had, I had that one. I opened up with a BBK IPA, and I thought it was pretty darn good. So it's your first favorite beer. Uh, well, I mean, there's Dos Equis Lager, and then there's BBK IPAs. Well, oh, I it's thought, been I thought overtaken. Dos Equis Lager was number two. Yeah. You, behind what? BBK. Behind BBK. 
Oh, did I did I, yeah. did I say that was before the best you one? had and tried it? You were like, I think it's up. my number one. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll go with that. He must have had a Dos Equis lager at lunch <laughs> right and was before. like, "Man, this is fucking it, way better." <laughs> it, it, it goes day to day. It goes day to day. <laughs> but yeah, if you have not seen the socials, I mean, on the socials, you've got all sorts of uh, pictures of the events. Uh, well, you got some great musical performances. Um, the audio is not going to be the best because the uh, <laughs> the uh, the acoustics in uh, the last call when you got a bunch of people that are loud and rowdy drinking BVK IPA. It's not the best acoustics, but you know what? You've got some great music from from Scotchback as well as Nate and Zach jumping in and doing a wagon wheel. Tre- tremendous, Nate's live debut. That was my first uh, as a live gig, yeah. and you killed it, bro. Sounded great, and Thanks. you did an awesome job, man. Thank that you, was it man. was it was awesome, and, and a lot of props on the socials there. Uh, but yeah, it was a great night, a lot of fun. There's still some four packs left. Uh, we went through a shit ton of them. We, we had them. They drank a lot of that beer. But there's there's some left. I mean, you can still get it right now. So, so by my math, we made three thousand five hundred and ten beers, and then you told me that they sold like seventy percent of them the, in the first night. I what? believe something like that. That's fucking wild. Seventy percent of like the cans. Uh, yeah, that's what. We of those told. cans, that's that's what I was told. So we maybe killed, I'm wrong. We killed wow. one large, like a real, like a large keg. <laughs> oh started the next one and sold like seventy percent of the cans, well, or two thirds of the cans, or something like that. Sixty six percent of the cans. I mean, we all left with a flat. Yeah, I had yeah. a lot. Well, I mean, there was a lot of cases going out the door. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so it was a uh, it was a good evening. But again, yeah, if you haven't had a chance to taste that, you better get down to a last call before. Before it runs out, they st- they still got it a week later. So Scotch Beck's here. He's he's sitting in uh, cruise, drinking some of the BBK IPA with us. So Scotch, mm-hmm. this was your first ever solo. Yes, it was. Show was it not? After many many of after decades of of professional musicianry, yes. if you if you had to guess, how many flying blind shows you've ever played? Oh Jesus! Or or shows period because you play with some other bands. That's yeah. true. That I, is I, true. Yeah. Um, shit. I mean, yeah. It, it's easily. Thousands. I, oh wow! I, I, oh, I would oh, say for sure. maybe um, because there was a time when we were playing a couple hundred a year easy, and I've been doing this for a long time. Thanks for saying decades, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was the inception of Flying Blind when you started playing your first live shows? I saw them at at the high, Houston High School. I think at a rally. Um, That's the live show. So, when was that? So our very, very first day as a band, we played two shows the first day. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Well, of course. Okay, this is back when we were an acoustic band, and but the first party was a it was a backyard party for a fiftieth birthday, and then we played at uh, the junior high for Radio Days. Oh. They did um, like their whole concert, and we like I just happened to see Miss Webb. And like, hey, we got some music we made. Check this out. She's like, you want to play a concert? I'm like, uh, sure. First oh, wow. day ever. We're in front of all these people that were like, they had to see their kids and all their you know trumpets and stuff. And we're like, hi, we're flying blind. And start so playing our what song. year was that? That was 93. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're talking about. So I mean, decades. I, I did say decades. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Uh, I know you didn't have to say it out loud. I meant, I meant, yeah. You years. said there was little kids there. Well, I mean, because that could have been me and Nick. You, it, it might have been. <laughs> but but the, the crazy thing is that you've you've played guitar, you play a little bit of piano, you you play a lot of instruments, right. and yet this was your first ever solo act. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I've played by myself on stage for like a song, but never like, hey, here's me and here's me playing. You know my music. Well, you, you play with yourself like all the time. So I, oh, yeah. mm. he plays with himself on stage occasionally. Yeah. Uh-huh. Depends <laughs> off. Depends off Anders around. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, so so so, how did it feel to do? I mean, was it? Did it feel like nerve wracking? You know what? It was. It's crazy. I was telling my friends about this. Um, like we said, it was an amazing time, amazing party. A lot of people just having an awesome time. There's a table of people in front of me that I nobody knew, and they were just there nope. for a birthday party, and they were just getting hammered, and and so a lot of talking, and in a way, like if I. I envisioned it beforehand, and I thought, man, if people aren't paying attention or whatever, it's probably going to freak me out. It's probably going to suck. I'm probably going to get all bummed out. It was the opposite. It was weird. It actually made it easy. I got to just sit back. At one point, I, actually, I was kind of giggling to myself. of like, okay. this is like, It kind of kicked off the rust, and I'm like, all right, let's do this. this it was super fun. I had a great time. Sounded great. And, yeah, thanks, oh, man. It was awesome. Yeah, the no, the were- group at, the, at that table right in front of you were a bunch of people that just wanted to go to the bar. Right. And uh, they had no idea. Had no idea who we were, who you were, who anyone was. 
and yeah, uh, yeah to quote anthrax they got caught in a mosh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were they were in a whirlwind real quick and they were being they were being loud they may or may not have been told to shut the fuck up a few times and they did not appreciate that either well one of but, them uh, he, one of them slipped me a five five dollar mill in my pocket no really? shit gave me, yeah gave me a tip no, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, I think I think, I think it was all that. love in the room, and, yeah. and even though it was it wasn't the best situation for for playing some 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 nice acoustic music. At the same time, like everybody was having a good time. Dude. That, yeah, that's all mad. I, I definitely I pulled out a couple covers just because I knew the, I had to read the room, and so you know I played the outfield. And, oh um, man, I got yeah. I was, was just my, about I, to I love that, that one. So I have a recording of it on this uh, this this memory card, and. I was actually worried because I got home and I had the the case for the memory card and there was no memory card and I was like, "Fuck! Did I drop that or did I lose it?" Like, it's happened. Before. I was a little bit worried, but no, it's in the machine, so I can actually take that home. I'm, I'm gonna check it out tonight. And see how the uh, the acoustics. Oh, you stuff. haven't listened to any because we recorded the entire evening. I hit record at one point and then when I came back, it looked like it must have got unplugged at some point. But I'm oh, hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that it made it through. So never mind. So who knows what we got? I we'll love see. that. It's uh, one of those. It's gonna be either a great surprise or it's gonna be like, oh shit! I guess it went off quick. So we we got it. We, 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 <laughs> We made a bunch of T-shirts uh, for the event, which we sold some, and we've got some left. So we've got the, we've got T-shirts that say BBK IPA on them with the label. We've got our traditional ones you've seen uh, us wear with the Bev's logo, and we've got tank tops of each of those. So um, we're going to charge like twenty bucks for a local pickup. I think twenty five for mailing them. So if you hear this and you want it, just hit us up on our socials, direct message us, or email us at Bev's Video Kingdom. Uh, they all look real good. Com. Yeah, they look all look real good. They're very soft, nice shirts. Yeah, so 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 hit us up and we'll we'll send them to you or we'll bring them to you or we'll let you pick them up and uh, so get your shirts while they last. We don't have a ton, so if you want them, uh, hit us up soon. You're, you're burying the lead here, Nate, and that is that uh, before the show, Brad, or before the night, Brad texts everybody and said, "We need to figure out a plan for selling the t-shirts." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, we really need to do that." And then we got there and just got drunk, and we literally <laughs> we sold, sold like. Did we? we? Because we people like came and were like, "Hey, I need to buy a T-shirt. Where can I buy a T-shirt?" We didn't have them set out yeah, or yeah. anything. But, yeah, we did a very poor <laughs> job of marketing the shirts. <laughs> and though a few weeks before that, we were like, "Let's buy three hundred shirts. We're going to sell all these shirts at the show." So, yeah, that's, that was that it. was some some bad planning on our best. But <laughs> the beer was delicious, and people had a hell of a time. So I think that's really all that matters. And you know what? We're going to continue making some uh, some good pods for you. So yeah. tonight. We are going to jump into the movie Hot Fuzz. Edgar Wright, uh, the second of the Cornetto trilogy. What? It was a. It's a trilogy. A very loosely tied together trilogy. This, I did this would not be with know Shaun that. of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and uh, The World's End. So those are the unofficial. Seth Rogen movie. No, 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 not the the the. Oh, this, this is, is the, the end. end or whatever it's called. Oh God. This is this is one with all uh, uh, Nick Frost, Simon Pegg. The same the same main characters are in each of those three. Gotcha. Movies. So, Edgar Wright, one of my favorite directors of all time. Uh, just a, a a genius when it comes to mixing music, uh, 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 interesting editing, fast pace, funny, clever dialogue. A lot of good stuff comes out of these movies. Uh, he's his major releases. He's done Shaun of the Dead. Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim, Adventures of Tin Tin, Spielberg movie, uh, The World's End, Baby Driver, Meet the Sparks, which is a documentary about uh, a band called The Sparks, and Last Night in Soho. And as Zach and I were just texting earlier, uh, he is also now um, scheduled to possibly do a adaptation of The Running Man. While you might not, you might know it as the Schwarzenegger movie from the uh, the early nineteen nineties. Uh, it is. Very, uh, Zach was saying, very, vastly different from the book. So the book is written by this dude, Richard Bachman, who you may or may not know is uh, one of the pen names of Stephen King. So Stephen King wrote this book under the Richard Bachman moniker. Um, he was just, he. people were saying that he was putting out bullshit books and people were only buying them because he was Stephen King. So he was like, fuck you, I'm going to write some, he wrote four books under uh, Richard Bachman and they got super popular and he was like, oh yeah, by the way, that's me, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is <laughs> such a gangster move. That's a Amazing. What other books do you know? Did he? Do? Oh, I want to say like the Dead Half or something like that. There's there's four of them. I, the, really the only one that I really dug. I've read all of them, but the only one that I really dug was The Running Man, and it's much different from the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, which is like kind of this. It's set in like a dystopian future in the book, but they kind of did it where it was like a like a like an arena where where the guys inside of an arena and these guys are trying to hunt hunt him and he has to get out. In the book, they're just basically like, here you go. 
you're you're you can either you can either die or you can win the grand prize by living for however long. I think they have he has to live for like seven days. He gets like a day head start in just in the world in this like dystopian future. Well, in the movie, he doesn't. It's not he gets thrown into like a. It's not an arena. No, it it's, seems, it's an arena. Yeah, no, they shoot him. They shoot him into like a real world kind of. It's a large arena. It's like they. I he feel goes like into a, the thing and then he's in all of a sudden like a cityscape and he's having to run around and maneuver. It so in like, the book, it's like. But I feel like it's in close because they have lights and like spotlights and yeah. stuff all yeah, down on sure. them. And in video the book, cameras. it's like he could yeah. run into Nate's backyard right now and hide somewhere in Nate's backyard. And then they, they anyways, they're tasked. They're gotcha. tasked with find. They they have to find him. They have like a force of like yeah, yeah. FBI type future guys that are searching for him. It's really cool. Uh, the That's ending's really cool. But anyways. I'm stoked about it because, dude, so I thought I had seen Hot Fuzz. Don't think I have. I just watched it. I really like Baby Driver, and Last Night in Soho looks exactly like a movie that I would love, although I have not seen it yet. And, uh, dude, I think he's going to I think he's gonna kill it with that, and I think you're right. His use of music uh, is pretty legit, I think. So let's get to it. Um, let's talk a little bit about the movie because uh, I, I love it. One of my... It's in my top 50. I'm not going to put it in my, my top 10 or 25, but it's in my top 50 for sure. But uh, first off, Nate, Scott, Nick, Zach. Zach, you say you haven't seen it. Nick, have you seen it? Yeah, I had seen it. Scotch, I know you have. Multiple times. I thought I had seen it. I think I have seen Shaun of the Dead for sure. I have not. I had not seen it. All right. So let's start with you then. What would you think? So I was really up and down on it. Um, I started out like... Thinking like I, for ten minutes in, I was like, "I'm gonna hate this movie." First, just preface this with what was your process for watching it? So, was it like fifteen minutes and then you stopped and um, then took an hour break, or did you watch it all the way through? No, no, I watched it in about. No, five. don't be. Sick. I watched it. I mean, depending on how you count it, I probably watched it on. I watched it probably in seven chunks on I think four different screens. <laughs> That's so fucking wild. <laughs> okay, now continue with your review. Never I apologize. stood a chance. Never um, stood a chance. So, well, so, so, so I, I, I think I know there are certain movies that that Brad and I really like. We we dig the same. There's a, there is a definitely you know the Arkansas circles overlap for sure. But there are parts of Brad's that are the way the way far end of his circle that does not overlap. I am not in on at all. And so I was kind of like suspicious when this movie started that it was going to be a far away because it definitely has the feel for me of a movie that is playing to like, I don't know if I want to say silly, but it's one, like, you know, the kind of thing that, that I, I know Brad to like is like anything that is sort of like novel and interesting in a way um, that, that, that is maybe clever or kind of like, like new, he's, he might grab him and draw him in. Whereas like that stuff does not always work for me. Like if it, if it's really disconnected, especially from some sort of story that I find interesting, I get really pay, impatient with it. So I would say that, that I slur, sort of like that I was fully expecting to just continue to dislike it. And it kind of slowly pulled me back in. And I think that, that what I kept puzzling over as the movie went on was like, I, I, you know, because of the draft we've got coming up later this week where it's kind of like, what's the best parody or spoof movie, right? So I was kind of expecting, like, I was like, wait a minute. So wait, is this a, is this a sp true spoof? And so, like, I was kind of putting in the mindset, I constantly was waiting and trying to decide, like, is this supposed to be completely ridiculous and silly? Or is it supposed to be a cop buddy movie? Or where, where are we and which thing is it? And I think like it stayed close enough to being its own thing without having to parody other things. And the action at the end especially was really cool and interesting and, um, and that I, I ended up, I think, liking it. I didn't love it. I wouldn't probably watch it a bunch, you know, a bunch more times. But I think for what it is, it does it really well. Um, so like I, I would say I would say I liked it. I would say I'm not as in on it as as uh, for the same for some of the reasons that you probably are. But I, I it would say against my will, I liked it more than I thought. <laughs> well, <laughs> with the, with the parody thing, the the reason it's considered a parody, parody, especially when you talk about that last scene with the shootouts, like so many of the the camera angles and some of the the action scenes are just straight rip offs of Bad Boys of uh, uh, John Woo, uh, John Woo movies and like all sorts of different action sequences that have come from other movies so it's point just, break yeah point yeah. break it's just straight ripping off them like purposefully and obviously intentionally which so. they telegraph right right yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah they so, own it so yeah that's that's where it gets the whole the, the whole parody thing all right so scotch oh, i love this movie i this is a movie i put on multiple times throughout the year 
every time it's on, where it, where I'm wherever I'm at, I put it on. I stop. I watch it. I love this movie. It's for some reason this humor is exactly right in my wheelhouse. And what I will say is, I saw this before I saw Shaun of the Dead, and I remember telling people, "Man, the Hot Fuzz, it's so good." And like, "Yeah, but you've seen Shaun of the Dead," and they're like, I, "We like that better." So it's, there's like people that either like Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz. It seems like more people like Shaun of the Dead. I think it was more popular, but. It's I'd, almost a thing where if you saw it first, whichever one you saw right. first is your movie, kind of. I love Shaun of the Dead. It's amazing in its own right. But this one, for some reason, I, when I first saw it, I remember a friend of mine, we got together and we were watching it and we really had no idea what it was. I hadn't really seen any commercials or anything. I just knew it was, it was a comedy and I just remember just loving it right from the beginning. Then it takes this whole crazy horror kind of it's not really horror but it there's some jump scares no, if you're I'm not if you're it. not if you're not thinking that it's coming it, it, it gets scares. a little I'm gonna get into it. it definitely gets a little gruesome very gruesome so yeah it was just crazy it was just like a movie i really hadn't seen like a, this really funny quirky movie with really legit good action horror and stuff like that so i've just always been a big fan of it and it absolutely gets better the more you watch it because that's the one thing that i think people complain about is is the quick dialogue and the and the accents a little bit hard to pick up at times but if you stick with it give it a few watches and you catch some of these jokes they're so fucking brilliant every time i watch it there's something like one little like yeah. head movement or like a reaction that like you just kind of miss and and god they're all so funny so i appreciate that uh nick what do you got so that's just taken off from what what you guys are just talking about it's the i love british humor Right. And they squeeze so much into such a short amount of time speaking so fast and you may not catch it, especially if the volume's not up. You're not going to like catch everything in this movie, but it makes for a great and a really fun rewatch. Uh, the action is great. The way it's cut, it's almost like moments of Tony Scott, the way it's cut and it's got that blurry kind of like they'll change the filter of like so the color changes from from time to time. And it's these quick like cuts of like a person like screaming in a scary like image. Is that the snatch guy? Tony Scott no. is um, Tony Scott Man is on Fire and point, oh. uh, not, not Point Break, but uh, uh, um, he's got a style. It's a uh, uh, um, he's Days of Thunder. He's Top Gun. Oh, but okay. like later on, he was he created this style that is what I'm talking about. It's the Man on Fire. It's the one with Robert Redford and and Brad Pitt, the spy, the spy movie, Spy Game, Spy Game. I think it's Tony Scott. Um, so the train cool. one with Denzel and Chris. Oh, the taking a Pelham one, two, three. No, no, the one with Chris Pine and the one where it's a it's a locomotive and it's just like you can't stop it, unstoppable. Yeah. Oh, that's right, it unstoppable. Yeah. unstoppable. Yeah, it's a train you can't train stop. It's unstoppable. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's a it's a style. So, anyways, it reminded me of that. But um, I forget. <laughs> so, trying to watch this movie uh, with a baby asleep in the other room, the volume goes from low too high so many times throughout the movie yeah it does i was sitting there and i would i'd have to like it would jump to like a <laughs> to like an action moment i mean jesus and i have to they turn go over it down. top of the gun sounds Dude, and all the sound effects this is also a problem when you're watching it on eight different screens uh, sometimes in headphones sometimes on a yeah. computer where you're supposed to be a 100%. Other job. It's, it's a problem. so never appreciate never thought of that never appreciate it before now um uh, a semi semi complaint, but not really. If you're actually just watching it, you know, from start to finish by yourself. But love the pace. I've watched it multiple times. Out of these movies, I'm a, Nick Frost is my guy. Who's the skinny one or the big one? He's the heavy set guy. He's fucking Dude, great. He fucking kills me. <laughs> he's funny. As when <laughs> when Simon Pegg is telling him the story about his like uncle or his dad, and he says blah blah blah, he's like, sounds like a great guy, and he's like, he actually got busted for blah blah, you know, for blah blah. <laughs> what a cunt. <laughs> and his like delivery, just, so oh, strange. his delivery, is so, <laughs> oh, or the it's immediate, or the little dr the book, you know, he's, oh, he's doing yeah. a, oh, yeah. a flip book, yeah. flip book. I and, use it, and he's like, Dude, that's just incredible. <laughs> Wait, do you see the other, one on the other side? Yeah, I want to know yeah. what the other side. I know, we don't get to see it. But uh, the, the thing about a, a guy like Nick Frost is, like, there's something to be said about actors who don't look like your typical actors that, like, when they're really good, it's always amazing. It's like, because it almost seems like just like a, just a more normal person. And you're like, this guy's giving great deliveries. He seems real. And, and he doesn't look like your typical Hollywood star. Some of the stuff that he does, I, it's at the top of me laughing as hard as I ever have in a comedy. Moments like that. There's a there's a moment um, at the world's end <laughs> where he's where he's messed up. He's drunk and he punches through a window. Like I don't know. Like, it's just these little things. His movements, like when he's doing like the goose call. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a swan call. <laughs> <laughs> 
just his his face, <laughs> his movement, his body movement, it's perfect and it's it's straight comedy every time. And I can rewatch it just for Nick Frost. And so to me, I, I go back to it for for him and then just how fun the movie is. The mixture of gore, the the jump the jump things that you're not expecting, and then just the connection to the the old buddy cop action movies. Love it all. All right, Zach, we saved you for last. Uh, okay. So I thought I had seen this movie and I was like, I was like, all right. And then I checked it out on IMDb and I was like, Dad, none of this seems familiar to me at all. So I'm not sure what movie I saw, but I was like, I've seen this British comedy cop Bad Boys movie. Too? No, I was, was going to make that same joke, Brad. <laughs> so, so yesterday I'm going to watch the movie. I'm like, all right. I told these guys I've been drinking two tall cans of BVK IPA in the evening. So I drink my two beers and... My kids haven't come home yet, and then grandma had them, and then she called, and she was like, hey, I'm going to keep the kids for a couple hours, and my wife looked at me and was like, let's go get dinner. We go to dinner, have two or three more beers, shots of tequila. <laughs> By the time I got home, it was it was all over. There's no way I'm watching Hot Fuzz. So I go to work today, and I'm at work, and I finish all my work by 2, and I get off at 4. And I'm like, all right, I got two hours. I'm going to watch Hot Fuzz right now. So I put on the headphones, and, dude, the sound. So... I've never watched a movie with headphones on, ever. I thought that I got the new Apple uh, earphones that don't fit your ears very well, yeah, like we talked about great. last yeah, episode. They, they look stupid and they fall out a lot. But they do, and I hate them. The but sound canceling? They're fucking sound canceling, and oh, no, they, they have, have that spatial weird spatial audio. Yeah, the spatial audio So the very beginning of it, when dude is like walking down that big long hallway, and there's like the bass going, and like something happens off to the left, and I can hear it like off to the left in my office, I literally thought that it wasn't coming through my headphones, that it was playing like through... The the speakers on the computer and i was like oh something's something's not right i turn it off i turn it back on i realize oh shit this is like really immersive and really cool might be my new way to watch movies however the beginning of this movie while the editing and the music and the sound design were really cool i was bored as fuck i was like okay this is a start. long setup a for this guy start. getting sent i didn't think there was a ton of laughs in the beginning maybe the first 40 minutes so I only get through 40 minutes at work and I'm like, all right, I drive home. I get home. My wife's there with the kids. She's like, I know you got to watch the movie. Like I'm going to make the kids dinner. Like just put the movie on. Let's watch it. My boys come out. My daughter comes out. I've got five, nine and 11 year olds. Right. I've watched the first 40 minutes of this movie and I'm like, you guys want to watch this movie with me? It's totally cool. (laughs) Literally. Seconds later, there's a gruesome murder, like right on the screen. My daughter's like, "Daddy, what is happening?" She's like, "I don't want to watch the rest of this movie." Jackson's like, "My my oldest son's like staring at the screen, like enthralled." What what was the first murder? The access, the access, oh, access. dude. Yeah, the my the older access. son's like really into it. My my youngest son's like on the couch, not talking. He's just like looking around. He's like, "Daddy, is this? You said we could. Can we watch this? Are we watching this?" So they watch the whole. Rest rest of it oh him. my god when freaking the guy gets crushed by the, oh, by the thing. so basically like i split it up perfectly to where the first 40 <laughs> minutes and i came home i told i told lisa i was like i don't love it so far like nothing's really happening i don't know what's gonna happen it's not very funny and then immediately it got into the the murderer plot line which hadn't really been foreshadowed before and and there was a bunch of funny stuff we were laughing and like some of the murders were so over the top, you know what I mean? My kids loved it when the guy freaking kills her with the the shears. <laughs> the shears. <laughs> Dude, it was not like a super appropriate movie to watch with them, but they liked it. And I ended up I, I told I told her after it was over, I was like, "Man, again, like Brad's movie in the beginning, I'm like this movie's terrible, and then at the end I'm like, I freaking liked it." Um, I don't know. It was it, I thought it was a I thought it was a fun ride. I I I knew that obviously I I called the 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 chunky guy was gonna do the shoot up in the air and not shoot his dad. I was like, it's obviously gonna be his dad, right? Because he's gonna care. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not really a huge action shoot 'em up guy, but uh, it was it was cool for what it was for sure. When, right. when the rock falls on the dude's head, did it remind you of when Joey gets the turkey stuck on his head? <laughs> uh, friends? We just watched that episode. <laughs> dude, I, I, I saw that, and he's like still walking for something. Yeah, like, still around. I'm, for getting, a I'm getting mad friends with him right now. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, there's there's scream vibes. There's all sorts there's of different like. There's all sorts of different vibes in this movie. That I mean, that's why it is kind of a like I said, a kind of a, a parody of 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 different movies. And uh, it's it's a silly movie. There's a lot of British humor. I mean, like 
everybody's talking about kind of the beginning a little bit slow. It's like, I'm dying because it's Martin Freeman. Uh, then you got Bill Nye coming in and like just all that whole little repeated comedy of him like saying like, why? Oh, I need to take this to the upper guy. Okay, you want the upper guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they keep coming in and just like that that style of humor just hits me. Yeah, and, see, and see, that that's exactly the thing that like it doesn't work for me. Same, like, like I, same I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's, it's I, I get why, like I see it just doesn't tickle me. And so like that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's was he the porn the porn stand in in love actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I love I, I love all the, all those guys that were like coming in like and I, I I liked it because they were them and I got the gag but I was just like okay I, I'm I'm laughing on the inside a little bit but I'm not like this is not yeah. killing me yeah but yeah like Brad's saying like the stupidest things get me every time in that like when they're at the uh, the crime scene and he's he's talking <laughs> to Kate Kate Blanchett and he's like. <laughs> Do I look like I would go out with Dave? <laughs> I'm going out with Stone. Hello there. <laughs> that, that stupid voice. And every time it makes you laugh. See, Brad's laughing now. No, yeah. he's he's laughing so. now. The first person goes up, he starts telling, oh, so I got this. He's like, I'm not. He's like, yeah. oh, my bad. He goes up to the next person. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like it sort of went away from that, right? I think uh, what Dave was saying was that, like, in the beginning, he thought it was going to be, like, this really quirky, like, kind of, like, uh, to me, it felt like an SNL sketch that goes too long in the beginning. Yeah. And then, and then at some point, they play it pretty freaking straight, except for except for the one guy doing his Batman voice. My son was like, he's doing the Batman voice. And I was like, yeah, he's being a badass. He's got his sunglasses on. Don't you see? He's a badass. <laughs> what about the hotel lady? Fascist. <laughs> so good. <laughs> then they point to the crossword. Hag. Hag. <laughs> the hag. The hag line got a laugh out of my wife. She thought that was good. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a fun movie. I, I, I obviously enjoy it. The, the thing about Edgar Wright that surprised me was that, well, I guess we should bring him in, but, but Edgar Wright is... I always thought like he was like probably a big music video guy. I mean, as much as he likes music, but he, he started off in film. Like that was his, his thing. Um, and then later in the mid 2010s, he did videos for Daft Punk and for Beck. So I, I was kind of shocked by that. I was like, I got to guarantee that this guy's done music videos like early. And then he got into movie making because that's just his style. It seems so music video ish at, at times. So I don't know. All right. So are we ready to, to bring Edgar Wright and Scotch Beck in here? <laughs> hey Scott. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. well hey, bring them both in. Scott. in. Thanks yeah. for coming in already. All right, folks. So we're gonna now jump into drinking with the director. You know what? Drinking the director is always sponsored by Last Call Brewing Company out of Oakdale, California. Also, the creators of the BVK IPA. Mm. Oh, it goes down to smooth. Delicious. And I see everybody at the table except for Nate is drinking BBK IPA. And what do you think Nate's drinking? It might be Diet and Pepsi. <laughs> Diet and Kennedy, <laughs> baby. But I did pour some uh, rye whiskey in it on this. Oh, nice. I, yeah. I will say that, that Nate, not only did he have some whiskey with him at the uh, last call brewery Allegedly. On Allegedly. Allegedly. That's Allegedly. What, that's what people uh, are, can people are that. saying that, but nobody knows for sure. Nobody can prove that. Um, it, but he did also have a bottle of grenadine <laughs> with him. I, he traveled with a bottle I, of Rose's I, grenadine. I, bought, I, I, bought, I bought, brought the grenadine and I had it on the table. And at one point, our buddy Kelly uh, was like, he's like, I picked it up to put it in. He's like, did you bring that from home? He's like, freaked out. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, starts dying. You're like my mom. My mom brings like tea bags everywhere. You're just like my mom. <laughs> just dying, dude. dude. Yeah. So you had the grenadine, but uh, everybody, everybody's got the the BBK IPA, and and we're gonna have this hopefully for for quite a while. BBK IPA out of my new beautiful glass. It tastes delicious and smooth. Go down there and get you some glassware Thanks. sponsored by Amy. Uh, uh, our, our unofficial manager. I mean, essentially, she's official. Unofficial. Official. As of unofficial yesterday, when manager. she sent us a bunch of suggestions about how to make our podcast bigger, she's officially our. <laughs> yeah, manager. we. She's just basically just like, I'm your manager, okay? Accept Pretty much. It. Accept it. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the situation. But we've got Edgar Wright coming in. Um, we're pouring him a BVK IPA, and he's going to drink it with us. And uh, just going off the Cornetto trilogy. Somebody was asking earlier, well, what does that mean? Why is it a trilogy? Cornetto ice creams are basically drumsticks. That's a, it's a European version of, of a drumstick here in the States. And uh, in each movie, they have different ice cream flavors that go with the movie. So it's like it's a red one in, uh, in Shaun of the Dead, blood and gore with the zombies. And then you got just the vanilla ice cream and with a blue wrapper in the, uh, uh, the hot fuzz for the cops. And then in the, uh, the World's End, it's a green wrapper. 
for the uh, the green goo that's coming out of the aliens. They were getting after those uh, those ice creams, especially towards the end. They're like just like <laughs> eating them together. He's got all of his face like and lips shit first. Yeah, like. it looked like my kid eating it. <laughs> I mean, I love drumstick. Drumstick's one of my favorite little ice creams. I mean, yeah. if, if somebody's got a drumstick, I'm I'm definitely getting after it. So mm-hmm. uh, that's the well, that's why it's a Cornetto Trilly. And the other thing that kind of ties them together is that in each movie. Somebody will attempt to jump over like a garden fence and uh, with different mixed results. So that's like the other his, his connection. Point, point Break the, the, was the first, was like the prequel. Never mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> jumping over fences. <Yeah. laughs> Lost it for a second. I, yeah. I, I, I didn't get that, but that's all right. Um, so what do we got? What are we going to talk to Edgar Wright about with, the, with regards to Hot Fuzz? So I want to know why, he, like, how do you decide Bad Boys 2 and Point Break? Right, which are great. I mean, the, 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 and I'm, I'm not really criticizing the choice um, because actually, especially Point Break, I like. Yeah. But it's a funny like, like there's a lot of buddy cop movies, right? So like, uh, you know, and and like you pointed out, right? There's a lot of different movies that he's taking different pieces of, and uh, so I was kind of like, you know, okay, so so I, I dig these, but I want to hear like, are these just his favorites? Are these the ones he thinks epitomizes the genre? Right, um, and but I will I will say like it's that that part of, maybe that might be my favorite single part of the movie is the inspired like overt explicit like connection with the other movies in the genre right where he's like it's not just like a hidden thing he's like oh well, we should, we're cops we should watch these movies it also reminded me of our buddy Lieutenant Dan who we had on the Training Day pod and he was also our guest judge for you know best buddy cops and he, his entire judging strategy was what movie made me want to be a cop yeah which i it, it was kind of a funny you know i had that thought i was like yeah you know cops want to watch cop movies too you know like in and some ways said, it was a it was like a spoof thing but it was also like i could be like i could totally see it you know didn't dan say it was like that stallone movie too it was like the oh, main tango one and Cash. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. Like his Kurt main russell one. Oh, yeah. stallone for sure <laughs> Um, I do love that when Nick Frost, when he brings uh, the Bad Boys 2 and Point Break, he's like, which one? He's like, uh, which one do I want to watch? No, which one do you want to watch, watch first? first. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, can you identify with that? I was, I have written down, talk to Brad about showing people movies because I've been this that guy and it never, ever works out like I think it's going to. It's We've, we've talked about showing people songs. And then they stop paying attention, and you're like, no, no, the g- good part's coming up. Like, just listen. <laughs> well, well, Nate knows I'm the king of YouTube videos. Oh, oh yeah. And the YouTube videos just, are probably to my... Say, to say the king of it is <laughs> one of the biggest understatements of, like, the emperor. <laughs> the, you're like the... I'm the, 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 the Adolf Hitler of YouTube videos. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. If we wanted to go there, then sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I'm like, you must watch this now. That fits you in too hard. I, I would have said you're the fascist of... Uh, yeah, the fascist, all right. The, you know, but that on brand for the movie. I will say in college, uh, when I've got... When I uh, the South Park movie came out on DVD, I pretty much had people on a constant like loop coming, through my, coming through my apartment. We were partying and stuff. I was like, I'm putting on South Park the movie, <laughs> and we're watching it. And so I think, I swear I watched it probably like 26 times in a row. Did it work out good? Were people like, yeah, this is hilarious? It was a mixed bag. I mean, there was there was times it was great, and there was times it was... It, it how how so much well. of this is a litmus test for you where you're like, I want to know if I like this person I'm putting this on? Oh, 100%. Like, if, if you're getting the humor and you're just dying with it, I'm like, okay, there's my people. And if you're not, I'm like, okay, well, your, your sense of humor sucks. <laughs> Damn, I'm a little afraid Nate's not going to want to be my friend anymore if I keep shitting on his romantic comedies. <laughs> if that's his litmus <laughs> test. He's like, definitely, maybe he's my litmus test. I don't test. think, I don't think, think Nate <laughs> holds it against us. That's not my litmus <laughs> test. No, nah, not at all. Not I'm, at all. No, my, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, I like this garbage, and I'm going to be surprised if any of you like it. <laughs> yeah, I got the dude 90210 DVD box oh, lo- set for, uh, for his birthday. Are we, a, are we a Dylan or Brandon family? What are we? What do we got going? I here? was always Brandon. Yeah, I was probably always Brandon. Although I, maybe I wanted to be Dylan. You know what I mean? Oh well, it's, like, it's, it's tough to make that we, move. But once you do, you just that. fucking drowning in pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how Nate always says I, I like yeah, to be. I'm, I like to be a little bit different. I was always a Tory Spelling girl. I mean, God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is getting too real, Brad. I forgot that you were Tory. Bro. You I take loved, you back. I love Donna. Da- that was my girl. Uh, take you back. Donna was my girl. I was a Kelly. I, I was pretty diehard Kelly. I, 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 you were Kelly and also Kelly Kapowski. You were. You were. Oh, you were uh, Kelly Kapowski, which is kind of weird, right? Because like, yeah, it was like real, kind of a little different types, but Kelly Kapowski and but well, so she was Kelly Kapowski. Eventually, was in nine hundred two and Yeah. Eventually, but I was much more of a Kelly Kapowski fan. There's there's two phases of Kelly Kapowski. There's there's Kelly Kapowski and Saved by the Bell, and then there's Kelly Kapowski from the college years on. 
Yeah. She, uh, man, the college years, Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> Did her right. Jesus Christ. She got learned up. I'm not. <laughs> never mind. I take it back. <laughs> she was a, nice, a lot less nice uncomfortable to think about her. Yep. Nice. She was a nice, <laughs> nice young woman who was, uh, anyways. Oh, man. So, uh, any other questions? What do, we got, what do we got for Edgar Wright or about this movie? I wish that there was more buddy cop ref- like references like Nate was saying, or just cop references. Like, I was, you know, watching it for, because I've seen it multiple times, like, you know, squeeze a diehard in there, even though it's not buddy cop, even though it kind of is. Him and Carl Winslow were Carl pretty Winslow. tight, and they never, they didn't meet each other till the very end. They're pretty close. I think they have Thanksgiving at each other's houses. Oh, yeah. And when it's at Carl Winslow's house, Steve Urkel comes in. No, I see what you're saying with the 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 cop references, but I feel like just the the the, the viewpoints, like especially the one uh, after they're out in the field and like the the movie's basically ending, and that helicopter flies over. It's that that slow mo look, and I mean they're just they're going for all those little things that just remind you of like other cop. Well, movies. like Lethal Weapon, they could have had a toilet seat with a bomb on it. Ah, yeah, there you, you go. You know, they could have they could have bit on that a little bit. I just it would have been know. the Lou though. It would have been. The Lou, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah talking about the Lou. Considering the the collection of film he had, like that's what I loved yeah. about when he when he when he shows them the collection. First of all, they walk in the apartment. It's like, so how long have you lived here? There's boxes everywhere. It's not even it's like five unpacked. years. <laughs> but he opens up the closet and it's like this perfectly organized, beautiful collection of DVDs. They said it was Edgar Wright, I think his brother and another guy that that was their like DVD collections all put together. Oh wow! In that in that you realize made that. you like nostalgic for that yeah. kind of a collection. I mean, he's exist. he's an alcoholic who loves beer. He goes home, doesn't even take care of his life or his, himself, doesn't unpack, has his movies movies perfectly out. I guarantee you he listens to Bev's Video Kingdom. That's like our, <laughs> target, <laughs> that's our target demo. That is our target demo. Oh, man. So I also, I, I'll, let me throw out another little fun like reference that was just, this is maybe the mo- most out of left field reference I liked, which was, the constant uh, by the power of Grayskull references. <laughs> yeah, they I, see I, something amazing. He by man. the power of Grayskull. And my, my my mom kept all of my uh, He-Man, but my He-Man action figures from when I was like three or four, nice. and all the little comics. So all of my kids have also played with them, and then that's led us to like down like He-Man rab- like rabbit holes on YouTube. And so the power of Grayskull has been around for me for a really long time, and I, I dug it. I was like, I don't know why you're saying this, and it makes no sense, but it's not does not fit in the cop genre. But, man, like you, you're hitting me right in the right spot. Well, 100% funny, a random and, reference. 100%. And they don't reference where that comes from. Like, they don't even – I oh, mean, you they just have, expect it everyone you know it or in you don't know it or you right. don't. Yeah. They know how old exactly. we are, bro. They know how old we are. They know their target demo. Uh, like, no, I, Nate, I'll, I'll – I'll, I'll, a double down on that because uh, I had Transformers. Transformers, my gym. I had, I had a lot of He Man stuff, but I kept my Transformers. And so my kids got to play with my Transformers and stuff. And then once they started growing out of them, I actually had a student of mine uh, as, as a teacher who uh, his dad and, and their, their bonding experience was going to like toy trade shows and stuff. And so he was one of my favorite students, really worked hard. He was going to go to Pacific, where I graduated from. So on the last day of school, I brought all my old Transformers. Oh, and I was are like, you fucking serious? Like, Dude, nice. I was like, you can have these. I know you. I know you have loved the collectibles and stuff. I got some old <laughs> shit here. This wow. is all you. So I gave right, I gave them all my old Transformers. That's pretty nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with my He Man stuff because uh, I actually have the like the the Skeletor castle where you it still has a working microphone. The, oh, oh yeah, yeah. It had the, it would give you that works. echoey shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And, like, and, and but Zach, I'll say on my story though, like, I kind of felt you know like Andy when he's giving his toys to Bonnie, like oh. you picked in the draft last week. Oh, like, amazing! I kind of felt like that. I was like, I was like, all right, dude. Here's here, look, all these pieces. You know, those go together. Those go together. And oh, you got to show them a little bit. Oh no, no. So this one. Sticks a little bit, so you got to press it in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was giving them all the little pointers and stuff, but uh, it was a it was a cool moment with a, a, one of my favorite students. So, so I want to piggyback it. that when we're as long as we're talking about nothing that has to do with the movie. So <laughs> my thing was Star Wars. Always Star Wars. I had a shit ton of Star Wars guys, and I remember I had them all like packed up up in my closet, and like I went to college, and I like told my dad like, "Hey, this is like." gonna be my retirement right here so don't be touching my star wars guys and i was just sure that these fucking star wars guys that had all the paint rubbed off of them had been played with a million times they're like discolored from laying in the sun i was like these things are gonna make me rich one day 
And then uh, eBay became a thing, and I became a grown up, and I looked up like the price of my fucking shitty little guys, and like one brand new in the package was like twenty six dollars, and I was like, <laughs> like my worn out mother sunburn. fucker. But we're talking like I was thirty five when I did this, and that's when I was like, okay, these are worth nothing. All right, I guess my kids can play with them, and I let I let my kids play with them. But you guys are fucking good. You got to categorize it as a slightly patinaed. Star Wars action figure. <laughs> I, I think then like, you, that's what you're missing. You're just missing that magic yeah. word. Renowned artist Nick Brown uh, browned these so that they look like uh, <laughs> so they look like they've really been in the Battle of the Clones. <laughs> they've been browned. I mean, Nate's, Giz- <laughs> Nate's gizmo with the uh, blue goatee might go for. A, I, I, a, a I've pretty never penny. looked up my gizmo, but if that thing is worth anything, I'm gonna start scrubbing that blue goatee right off of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your gizmo that's ate a blue popsicle. Uh, and it, and, it, and, it, and not, let me just say that thing. Uh, that thing I think, a little warm. I think it found Cookie Monster and, you know, <laughs> that's, I'll just leave it there. Is that a Smurf cum joke? Is that, is that what that is? <laughs> All right. Do we got other questions for, for Edgar? He's a great dude. He seems like a really fun guy. Uh, all his interviews are, are very personable and, and seems like he's just a cool person to hang out with. So my thing is that I feel like, okay, so this is going to sound bad since I haven't seen the other two movies in the, in the Ice Cream Cone trilogy. But what I'm going to say is that like, I don't necessarily love the straight man. What's his name? Peg? Simon Peg. So he's not he's not great to me. I feel like the, the bigger guy just kills it. And his, like, expressions, he looks like, to me, a grown-up second grader. Like, everything <laughs> that he does, he's, like, excited about. And he's just, like... He's got kind of the, the big British teeth and stuff. Man, yeah. really, really funny. The other guy was kind of forgettable for me. I liked when he, like, made the switch and was like, all right, now I'm going to be a badass. I liked that, like, story device. But I don't think he necessarily... He wasn't necessarily funny. Is he funny in the other ones? Is he, he funny or similar kind of the straight, the straight, the straight lace dude? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, he's, he's definitely... I mean, that's the whole point of his character is he's the straight-laced best cop by the book. But at, at what I love about this at the very end, when they're they're all doing the paperwork or whatever, and he's he getting finally all loosens yes, up. Yes, exactly. And so it's like, it just took him a while, and now he's kind of back in it. But, and it was funny to see him loosen up. I did laugh several times at yeah. that, like, sequence with the with the guys kind of, like, just being, like, kind of like a good coworker, like a team player type guy. I liked that because it was such a difference from his normal character. So, so you haven't seen Shaun of the Dead? No, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, so he's, he's more of a, an aloof kind of... Fun loving, he's not definitely not as straight, in, but so I think you would I, like him better. But I mean, he's still straight, and and Nick Frost is definitely the the super doof in that first one, but he's a little bit more fun in the first one. I guess I, I, I got some commentary on that when when we get to body bag is like I okay. th- I have some issues with Simon Pegg as far as his characters throughout this little trilogy. I guess I thought he was gonna be really funny. Like everybody talks about how funny these movies are, and. I guess he just he just didn't have many jokes. I guess really. Well, I mean, he he, he delivers though like some great punchlines. Because I mean, he'll be like, uh, he's like, oh oh yeah, she's a police woman. We don't call him police. We call him police officers. Well, how long have you been a police woman officer? <laughs> just like the way that he sets them up constantly is like with these like funny little just. Yeah, he's setting it up. Yeah, he is. Like, he's, yeah. he's a straight he's, man he's a straight for sure. Man. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it and it it works. I guess. I just. I guess. I just. I went into it with the preconceived notion that they're like a comedy duo and we're going to be like really funny, both of them. And the one guy really, really brings the comedy to me and the other guy was just kind of there. But so, Simon, Simon Pegg also writes though too. So it's like, well, there I mean, you go. That's, I mean, there, that's you the explained thing. it. And if you're going to be the straight man and you're not super funny and you write the shit, like then you get to be that guy. What do you got? Nate? So some of it though, like, so, so I was kind of asking the movie, the, like how he chose the movies partly because for me, if I want to take like, the, the closest thing to this in, in its own way in a couple different dimensions, it's Dragnet, the movie. So I was a pretty big Dragnet fan, right? Like if, if you're going to take a real homage, right? And it's like the classic, you know, they're not quite right, but it's it's Joe Friday who's the really like straight and narrow mm-hmm. cop, not quite as like elite as, as the Is that That's just the facts, ma'am? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And then Tom Hanks plays, uh, play, plays uh, Strebeck. And so it's kind of a like, you know, and they also end up, that movie ends up also having this kind of like a, a little bit of a, like a weird, you know, like goat work, you know, goat sacrifice, you know, kind of weird, you know, seancey thing. So there are some things that remind me of it, but I wonder whether or not some of it is just that unless you're really in tune with that British humor, the straight man doesn't play as well. So like, I'm not saying it's not funny. I'm just saying you really have to be dialed into that thing because for me, I love Dragnet and I think for me that you know just the facts ma'am right there's a lot of funny 
very similarly delivered lines. I mean, he doesn't have very much in that movie that he's like trying to be funny, except that he's the straight man. And yet for me, I was much funnier. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but, but I like, I, I found his character funnier is okay. This might be way off. Is he or someone from this movie the guy that plays the Jim Halpert character in the British office? It's the Mar- Martin it's Freeman. Martin Freeman was the uh, the the first cop, uh, the first in guy London. at the London station. Who is also telling, who's also the guy from the other thing that we're from talking. Love Actually. He's, oh, so that's all the same guy. And he's Tim, and he's he's is that's, he a big that's star in one Britain? of my. That's one of my favorite characters of all time. He was he was in the Hitchhiker's Guy of the Galaxy movie. He played uh, I know you Arthur love, Dent. So you I mean, love the British Office, right? Yes. No. And, Tim, and so much so that you didn't even watch the Steve Carell version. Is that I watched correct? the first episode, and <laughs> I was mad that they basically copied the British Office in the first episode. I know, I know, it goes different after that, but just it's <laughs> oh, is the is the, the pilot next, like super? Years, I mean, uh, maybe different. this says something about my humor, like the, the my style of humor. There's there's something about British humor that's a little bit more dry, a little bit more, I think, less like silly. In a sense, see, take this. What's funny about that though is your fucking brand of humor is precisely silly. Like, like th- this shit is fucking silly. Like, you the, just the, the, happen to also like it, British humor, but like a lot of other the other stuff is not is dry it, British humor. No, it, it's it, like I don't think it's that you like it not silly. The American it's Office you is like, right up your alley. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I have a theory? And this is Nate's theory that I'm going to reiterate, and that is that. Nate has stressed on the pod several times that you like shit that's off the beaten path, yes. right? So the office is like super mainstream, about as mainstream as it can get. So you you enjoy the fact that the that the British office is like not a lot of people have seen it, and it's kind of like quirkier. You know, does, does that make? I don't you're mean not, that as an you're insult. You're not selling. It I felt that you, I felt that the, <laughs> the the American office was too much more like a sitcom and and less it. The the British office is is kind of based in realism. I feel like it's more like it feels like it's real. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, versus that's it doesn't feel like it's like a show. Yeah. And I think that's what I really kind of appreciate about it. I love the American that's, office, that's right. but I agree with what you're saying that it's definitely I mean, it's not a real office place, right? I mean, it's not based in a ton of reality. Well, and, and I mean, David Brett in the British office is truly like outrageous and over the top. But not so much like it is it is a weird thing because like he's horrible and almost like less re- he's less redeemable in, than Michael than Scott. Michael? Really? But but in a way that's like almost makes it believable. Like, yeah, you could, you, there could be somebody who was really that terrible that somehow or another, like eventually, you know, so like I do see the I do see what, see what Brad's saying. I love the British office, too. So I, I see think of them as very different things, but like love them both. But I would say that that, you know. That, that, that you like the British brand of humor and you like things that are silly both. And when those yeah. things intersect, like a movie like this, it's it's a perfect storm. For I you, think you're right. I, I, I think that's, right that's probably pretty true. That's probably pretty true. A couple of things I like to just talk about is just I love the fact that he brings in interesting characters. I mean, all the little side characters in this movie from from the townspeople to um, uh, PC Walker, who's the older cop that is, he just kind of mumbles and stuff. But he has some just two individual words that are great lines when Every time the female cop kind of says something kind of off the wall, and he just kind of says, he goes, nah, tits. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I didn't even notice See, that. That's the th- and that's the thing. Those are the things you miss if you're, if you're not watching it. I didn't even notice so, that at so, all. Yeah, so she's talking about, so she makes a joke because it, it's, it's when it's the car crash. Yeah, and the, and they've they been beheaded. The car crash, and she goes, I've had my top off a few times or something like that. And he goes, yeah. tits. Yeah. <laughs> And I do love it that she's yeah. the one, the like Randy one. Oh, that yeah. is yeah. a divi- thing I Olivia like. Olivia Coleman. You play she's just a little so against good. type where she's it's like great. in a room full of dudes, she's the one that's always making the like raunchy shit. I thought fucking the jokes. females actually killed it in this. I thought she was totally great. Agree. I thought the blonde Juliet girl was fucking just so amazingly awkwardly funny to me. Like her, her, the, the, the actress? Yeah. Her laugh and oh, her, like, her like her like her <laughs> like neck skin or whatever this is, like her waddle, like the way that she would her move waddle. her chin. Like into her face and make this weird laugh. It was cool. Well, well, but I mean, me like, up. and the old, the older um, women in the movie. So the one that's the the hotel reception oh, yeah. the owner. Yeah. We talked about that. And the the lady in the the florist. I mean, both are. And then there's a number of others, but they're yeah. they're, they're perfect in their roles. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, and then just and the other one with that that dude is when uh, they talk about she's like, oh, I like a little gobble in the morning, and he's just goes, eh, cock. <laughs> <laughs> 
I missed both of those. Yeah. And then the translation scene where, where they have the, the farmer dude that's really bad, and then he translates it to the, the mumbly dude, and then he translates it to, to Nick Frost, and then he translates it to Simon Pegg. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yes, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. that's, so good. that's what I'm saying. That kind of stuff is uh, absurd and silly, but just, like yeah. I said, that's that's what hits me right in the heart. Has the chunky guy done? Yeah, I keep calling him the chunky, <laughs> the chunky guy. Yeah, I, I Nick say Frost. over and over. Nick Frost. <laughs> Nick Frost. Has yeah. he done anything else besides these three movies like he's fucking awesome i really like him i want to watch him in something else what that's, else is I, I should have probably done a little bit more research than oh no Frost i'm putting you on the spot i know i didn't do enough research on him to uh to look into his imdb did any of you guys see the um because i i didn't it was it's simon Pegg and nick frost with uh the alien um I oh wrote, that world's yeah, end seth Ro- seth rogan seth rogan is, is, is the paul alien. is the uh, paul thank you yeah, uh, did you, anybody see that one? Did not. Yeah. Did not. I, I did see that. That was bananas. Okay. It yeah, was a it good was, one? Eh. No, not bananas. But it's Simon Pegg and the other guy, too, Frost. right? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Together. But it's, it's yeah. Um, Just no ice cream. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't think of anything he's been in. I'm sure it's probably a lot of British stuff, maybe TV and, and things like that. I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that he's probably been in a lot of stuff. I just really liked him. His like boyish like giddiness for everything, just fucking. Oh yeah, just gung ho the entire dude. time. Like, he was he's just he's 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 good natured in that weird way, pretty much the entire time, and, and it's a lot of fun. So a question I have for Edgar Wright is: as far as the next movie, The World's End, what what does he think went wrong with that? Because personally, I didn't like that movie at all, and I loved the first two so much and it was bad huh? it was I, it, it the i didn't like the characters they were just super straight i didn't like simon Pegg's character he was just so over the top and it just he what none of nobody was really likable to me honestly i've only seen it once i started watching it again the other night and i couldn't keep watching it oh and but i'm wondering if like does he have any regrets about keeping it a trilogy and, and maybe going with this the two um, and I, I was curious on how it actually did. And I looked up the box office numbers. Actually, I was surprised because the box office of Shaun of the Dead was actually lower. So it, that one gained cold. Because that was the first one, that right? That was the first one. Yeah. So nobody knew about it. So, But I hear everybody talking about it. So it must have just gained a lot in the well, back I mean, end. This went, uh, 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 Hot Fuzz was $8 million budget, $80 million worldwide. So right, I mean, right. Just killed it. It was killed in American it. theaters, right? I mean, oh, it, was, it came oh, yeah, out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was popular. Big time. Yeah. yeah, so Shaun of the Dead only made $30 million worldwide on a $6 million budget, which is still good. But um, but then the, the... Yeah, the back end on it must the, be crazy. The World's End... Twenty million dollar budget and only made forty six million. Well, legit, legit story is is uh, my friends from Cali True Crime. They got me for my birthday with a, a blind buy. They got me Shaun of the Dead. Long time ago, like right after it come out, they got me the DVD Shaun the Dead, and they're like, "I think you're gonna love this." And I was like, "I've never seen it." Legitimately, it sat on my shelf for like so probably they, four or five years. They That's had on seen brand. it, and Je- you Jess and Chuck. It? They had seen it because he because Chuck talked that, about that it, about them going to the scene yeah. the theater like on one of like their first dates exactly. Yeah. So he he got that four or five years it sat without you yes. watching it in the plastic and and, and, and you loved it and that's legit like that's it like somebody tells you you should you're gonna like something and you're like fuck you I'm not gonna <laughs> so that was my <laughs> sums them up. that was not only my point about Brad but my point about also trying to show somebody like a movie oh I know I should have sat down well, and watched which it immediately is, which is, you know which is ironic because Brad's the ultimate watch this you're gonna, you, you're gonna love it <laughs> I know I'm a fucking but, asshole but if somebody tried I, I, if somebody I, tells 100% him, agree like, nah fuck you 100% agree <laughs> and, and and I sat there and did not watch it for long, and finally got it out and watched it. And I was How like, long did it take you to watch Shawshank? Yeah, I was just oh, about wait, to ask you that. You haven't watched it yet. Hey, that's going to happen. Two weeks, in two weeks, mother. Two weeks. I'm going to watch oh Shawshank God, Redemption, guys, weeks? for the first time. Oh, oh, two weeks. To the 50th. Gotta remind that's it. the I gotta, 50th episode. I got to make sure my dude is going to be available. Yeah, we got yes. a great. Jack's got a special guest for us for the Shawshank. Dude. That's our. That that, that one's going to be our 50th episode, I think. Uh, the, the the movie yeah. the movie pod will be 49, and the draft, draft episode for that will be 50. Oh, that's yes. perfect. And then my buddy's going to judge the draft, right? Yep. yep. Oh, dude. How wild is that? 50 yeah. episodes. I know. 50. And Brad, more importantly, Brad's going to watch Shawshank in theory. I'm just stoked. Oh, I 100% will watch I it. Think we should, like, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll lie. Sure maybe I'll just decide to lie. Maybe that makes some good pod. But <laughs> Remember that one time when, uh, you know, when Andy uh, like decided to join the. the I'm know, like, oh, yeah, dude. All, all the prison scenes, they were great, right, guys? They yeah, had those prison scenes. <laughs> I can't believe cool. they never got. You're still not going to watch it? Is that what the joke is? <laughs> oh, joke. dude. <laughs> I just almost ruined the movie. No. Yeah. All right. Keep it so, down over there. Don't talk about the shower rape scene. 
Anything else to talk about, Richard? Uh, Richard, right? I was just going. Uh, yeah, if, we're, if, we're, if we want to move on to Richard Wright, I got some. I got some things. I know, but you're thinking of teacher Richard Wright. I'm thinking of Pink Floyd's uh, mm. keyboardist Richard Wright. Oh no, I, that's what I was talking about. I want to know about that one riff in that one song. <laughs> <laughs> oh look at scott she's bringing out the pink fly love it. all right so um let's uh get rid of them yeah i just want to say very so, quickly that i love baby driver i thought it was good 100 percent. i love baby that. driver great movie yeah yeah it was all right i want to uh, watch it <laughs> i'm saying i want to watch it with my headphones on now that i've done like part of Zach's one of his movies with my watch his entire we can only, you can only too. imagine that edgar wright's gotten better and better with his sound editing yeah and like, and like putting things together because like this was way. an early one for him right yeah, and it was like early. the editing was legit the sound was legit i liked it more than i thought i was gonna like it and his his imdb is actually pretty small like i mean he's not putting out movies that often they're they're coming out every three four years so he's one of those guys that's kind of just Deciding when he wants to do something interesting, so it's uh, it's it's been cool. Edgar Wright, thank you so much. So, for somebody showing. give him a pack of the BBK IPA to take. Oh yeah, it, we'll, we'll put a four back in his hand as we send him out the door, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be back with some shag snag body bag. I gotta get back in hot fuzz mode. Oh, do you? you are you, are you not ready for shag snag body bag? Because that's what time it is, folks. I don't love how I was calling him the chunky guy every time. <laughs> I was fucking ashamed of myself. Are you going to make that's amends cool. for that right now? I should tell the guy with the shitty teeth. Yeah, is yes. that better? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's ambiguous. It's a British movie. Gosh. That doesn't narrow it down at all in this British comedy. <laughs> Nick Frost is a nice man. He seems like, I don't know, maybe there's some, uh, may, find Bro. some problematic shit and you can be like, yeah, that's why I'm talking shit about him. I'm not talking shit about him. I'm just saying that like, I have no other way to describe. I can't say the British guy. And I'm just like the, the chunky dude. And he's so You say bigger good. guy, smaller guy? Could just call him Nick Frost. I mean, I'm just Or we could say his there. name. Yeah, that would require research. His name is Nick Frost. And uh, his time. name is Nick Frost. <laughs> All right, he's so. not that big, dude. He's not like meatloaf big. All right, R.I.P. Why are you R. talking R. to meatloaf. me like I've been calling him fat all, all pod? <laughs> like, dude, I'm Zach just is saying. talking down to Nick right well, now. Don't he's insult like, for his own, <laughs> his own transgressions. Don't he's insult like, my dude, bro. Goddamn, Nick. <laughs> Why would you do him like that? I okay. said it one time. I said I made sure it was heavy set. Tuck, man, tuck uh, your fucking tuck your fucking veins back into your long sleeve shirt. All right, I'm, so, hey, pod right we're now. All, I'm jacketed up, bro. We're on shag snack body bag. Jack. We're gonna we're gonna shag some things that we Jack. really just want to get down with. Like we're like in the moment, yeah, we're gonna make that happen. So what do we got? What are we shagging, Nate? Oh man. I I guess I I'm gonna shag uh I'm gonna shag the power of gray skull. <laughs> I just I love I love that reference that comes out of I mean, it, it partly because like a lot of the references that I think do come off a little out of nowhere, I don't they don't hit me. But this one, I love that there's just no attempt to explain it or situate it. It's just like if you get it and you love it, then you're great. And if not, then like move along. So I'm all in on the power of gray skull. Good stuff, Zach. What do you got? So I'm I'm gonna shag the sudden change from super boring movie to like almost like a to like a like a mystery. Like I knew there was gonna be a mystery, but I dug that there was a killer. I really like movies where there's a killer that you either like don't see their face. They don't even have to be necessarily costumed. A lot of movies will do where you see like their feet or their hands and you see like what they're doing, but you don't see who it is, which I dig. I don't know if you guys did Mayor of Easttown. Did you guys watch that oh, one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they had a bunch of scenes where like you can see the bad guy and you can see his body, but his body type could be a bunch of these people that you know in the show and you don't know who it is. So they kind of did that and then they kind of rolled with their spoof thing and made it like 70 different people which i right. thought was yeah like they make you think it's one person then they make you think it's two people and then all of a sudden it's like 12 people sitting around and i also got some vibes where i i dig the uh i dig the ending kind of tropey thing of it being like a satanic cult even though it wasn't, it didn't end up being a satanic cult, but, uh, but they but sort of made you, you think that. that. Yeah. Exactly. Which I really enjoyed. So that's that's my snack. Zach, I'm, I'm jumping on your back right here because I, I really enjoyed the fact that I'm shagging the plot in which that the cop, he figures it out. He's like, he's pieced together all this evidence. This he was right. A freaky business deal. Yeah. No, no, no. But that's the thing, though. He has this whole freaky business deal and he pieces it all together and he thinks, and actually he was wrong. No. 
they actually killed these people because they just didn't like didn't them. Like them. <laughs> they didn't like True. the dude's acting. Yes. They didn't like the dude's house. <laughs> but they didn't like that that the editor of the paper's making typos. Yeah. That's why they killed the folks. It has nothing to do with all his, all the real stuff that but it actually it makes sense. Like But the guy was guilty that he was accusing those, is what I was saying, right? You agree with that. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. But yeah. but I love that they, they make it sound like, oh, he's figured out the whole plot. Like there's this this nefarious thing, but they're like, No, fuck these people. We just didn't like them. Yeah. It was like a fifteen yeah. minute scene of him like laying out like all the things that he had figured out right and that's that's the kind of the spoof of it is like they just like basically blow that on its end they're like no actually we just don't like these people because they're assholes and we don't want them in our town so that's why we're killing them so that's my shag yeah uh, she was a shitty actress right a sh- <laughs> like both two- of them are shitty actors and, and actresses like, she played a corpse in fucking law and order or whatever it was <laughs> the other dude was in uh there was what movie does he say he's in he's like i forgot what movie it's like some kind of semi-famous movie he's like he, he was an extra in da 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 yeah an extra and a corpse <laughs> All right, Nikki, what do you got, man? All right, I got um, I got the fact that everybody in the town was just packing crazy guns and ammunition, <laughs> and just like you were curious when you were like, oh, everyone's gonna have something. You wonder like, oh, what's this character's like, you know, text? What's their weapon what's their gonna, weapon be? gonna yes. be? Hell yeah. So you have the fascist lady, and it's like the side clip. To like yeah, she goes out the machine gun, just going <laughs> off, like, just... and it looks like it's breaking her shoulder with every like the the uh, what's it called the the recoil yeah oh, the recoil dude. yeah there for was sure. there was like some very like there was some willy-nilly like people shooting double-barreled 12-gauge shotguns the guy at the very that end. were like not even bracing it against their body and they're just like shooting it willy-nilly dude, the, and the, the like, dude, that shit would knock you down uh, nick frost it's like a it's like a <laughs> musket it's like a musket, it's <laughs> like the wide barrel oh, musket. Yeah. <laughs> i love i love the the first couple that that uh that he runs into it's the the man and his mom, and the mom has the the shotgun, and she shoots, and then he goes drop kicks her old ass in the <laughs> face. Oh, yeah, mom. <laughs> yeah, and he just does a sprinting drop kick in her face, and they're sitting there, she's bleeding out of her nose. Yeah. And he's like, just somebody should have had like the the rocket launcher though. Somebody <laughs> needed to have either the rocket. launcher. I feel like he had one when he, when he walked out of the out of the precinct. I don't think he ever used it, but I feel like he had one sticking out of his back. I think it was a couple was shotguns. Like yeah, was shotguns. Is that what that was? was? Like the crazy, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the, I think it had like the, the shell uh, the shell holders on, yeah. the, on the butt. There was yeah. something wild going on. So I dug that. <laughs> when it went off the rails that way, I, I love that part. So it was also like the, the scene where they're jumping over the fence and then the last jump, he does like a triple flip yeah, she, in like the there's air, a trampoline. and there's no explanation yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which sort of pushes it like that was a moment where I was like, okay, this is the spoof part. Yeah, exactly. This is the parody. But and, it and, never but goes, goes fully goes that way. Exactly. That yeah. Way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. All right. So we're now into snag things we want to take home to mom. We love them. We're going to pet their hair and, you know, just give them little kisses on the neck. So I, I love, I, I like generally movies where, where the, the, the setting of the movie is an important character. Um, and this come uh, the town, right? And, and, and it's you mean, not, you mean the best village in the world, the best village in the world. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, I, but I would say generally, like I'm going to, sna- I want to snag the quaint British village. Like I, I mean, I, I dig that. And I would say even, you know, more generally like a quaint kind of European village, um, remind me a little bit of like Bruges. I, I was just going to say to you, I was going to be like, would we consider Bruges kind of like village? Yeah. Cause we went to that kind one of. pub and it was just like, so like, like low yeah. key and cool. And like, and, the, and, 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 and in that way, hills. in that way, right. The movie in Bruges has this, this similar character where the town is totally part yeah. of the character in the movie. And so like, I, I think, and, and, and the thing I like about it is like, you know, lots of different settings work, right? I mean, like, you know, we talk a lot about True Detective Season 1, Ugh. right? The bayou is like, South. you know, yes. the, the, the Louisiana area and, and so that area sweaty. is such a, you know, such a part of the the the, the a character in the, in, the, in the show. So, but I like, I, I, it works for me here, right? Like, that's a, that's a part of it that's essential and makes you, you know, want to sort of see more of the town and, you know, go to the pub every day after work kind of thing. It's just, you know, it feels cool. So <laughs> that's a great segue, Nate, because I'm snagging the pub. Yeah. I mean, especially in a place as small, like we live in a really small town and there's never, since I've lived here, there's never been like a real, like a watering hole, like a bar. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was one, I think somebody got murdered there, like when we were kids, right? Yeah. There, but yeah, there's a little bit of a rough crowd down there, yeah. but I like, and, and my dad said, you know, I was talking to my dad about some stuff and he was talking about like. 
that was the thing. Like, dudes, you went to the bar after work for a couple hours and then went went home to your family. Like, cheers. You know what I mean? Like, that type of shit. Like, you would meet your friends at the bar and there was, like, a real, like, community aspect to, like, your local neighborhood bar that I think has been lost now because of social media and, like, you know, many different factors. Well, but, Zach, let me just pause you there for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, Because I got? feel like last call, man, like, walking in there tonight, I was picking up the keg and it's like, I run into some people I know from the, from from Oakdale, and like I'm hanging with them for a second. It was the owner of Last Call. It was Walter, our favorite brewmaster. It was Jake, the taproom manager. He wasn't working, but he was down there. They were getting some food from the food truck, and it was just like sat down, had a beer with them, and it's just like we're shooting the shit for a little bit. Yeah, it just had that comfy feeling of like you know what these are just people I like, people hanging out, everybody's having a good time, and it's not it's not a bar so to speak, so it's not like people taking shots and and, and drinking whiskey. But people are drinking, right. and it's a social place, and it's yeah. a place to go meet up. And, and I just feel like that's been sort of lost. Like, people had, like, my dad talks about it, like, you know, back in the day, you know, we're talking, like, 70s, right? Like, early 80s, there was, like, you had your bar, and you would go there, like, five nights a week or whatever it is. And you would, maybe there would be chicks there, and you'd try to meet chicks, or maybe you'd meet up with people from work, or maybe you'd just meet up with dudes from high school, or whatever it was. And it just... That kind of thing seems really cool and nostalgic to me, even though I've never really had that. I mean, we would go to bars when I was a kid, but it would be like 99 people I didn't know and like four people I knew. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I was there every night and you would know like the clientele and stuff. I don't know. I just think that's really cool. I mean, it's is the town that we're in right now, is, is Houston big enough to have that type of establishment and do well, they, okay? Well, they've oh, kind yeah. of been doing it with agave agave mm-hmm. azul the mexican uh like a like a sort of like slightly higher end seemingly higher end uh mexican restaurant in town and they have really good drinks like fancy glasses and like cool garnishes and stuff and i think that like but that, but, but that's not really the kind of place you're i mean you're talking about some place that's a little more yes. like down to earth you know like a local bar. Like, like a little bit of a dive bar. Yeah. A little bit of a bar. Yeah. 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 Bit that's, of dive that's bar. what I'm talking about right now. But I mean, just saying, as far as like the closest thing we have in our yeah. town is yeah. going to be that for right. sure. I know that people from like other towns have talked to me about like, oh, yeah, we go out and, and meet at and Agave as well and have drinks and stuff. Yeah, like right. it's kind of like a, like not a destination, but people they have come damn good gotcha. cocktails. Yeah. People come from farther away to eat there and drink there, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to snag Nick Frost. I yeah. talked about him earlier, my guy. Um, I've watched all three of the movies of the trilogy. I've seen a, The World's End, I think, a couple times, actually. I like it. It's my least favorite of the three. But, again, if without Nick Frost, it's a maybe, maybe it's a one-watcher, even. But I'll, I'll go to any movie that Wright is directing and Nick Frost is in. I'm, I'm, it's a sold ticket, and I'm probably rewatching it at least a few times. So... Nick Frost, he kills me, and I don't watch these movies that often. It's been a while since I'd seen um, Hot Fuzz. But even just like I was talking about earlier on the pod, thinking about that part of The World's End and picturing Nick Frost and his body movements, just his comedic timing, his British comedic timing, but then also the mixture of that Britishness with the just the the falling and, like, the Chris Farley, the Chris Farley in him, like, really, is... Is great and it's so much fun to watch and I love just that pure old school comedy that makes you laugh every single time and that's Nick Frost and he also I think he can act his ass off actually I actually think he can I think he's got some pretty damn good chops I was looking at some of the movies that he he's in and it's not the greatest IMDb really as far as like out, outside of the right movies there's a movie called Wrestling with Your Family um, oh, that's yeah. actually a fun watch he's uh, the dad I think in it and uh, he's really good. But I actually think he can act quite well too. So, Nick Frost, that's my that's my snag. I love that guy. Good shit. So my my snag is the director Edgar Wright. Not surprised. Um, one of the most creative filmmakers I've watched in the last uh, you know twenty years or so. Brilliantly mixes music, film together, uh, in inventive ways. He's just creative. He like I mean Scott Pilgrim vs the World to me is one of the the, the top ten movies of all time just because he does just amazing things. I mean, I like video games. I like music. I like a, a silly sense of humor. And it's like, it's got all of that together. It's a cool movie. I feel like that movie's like getting hate lately. And I love that. I, really? I don't understand yeah. why there's a lot of haters for that movie because I just think it's one of the most it's really great. creative, well made movies I've seen of all time. I saw it in the theater 
and it was kind of, I'm with you, Brad. I had a moment. It was kind of like what Nate was talking about, too. It was so different. Nobody's done anything like it before or since. When I saw it in the theater, I was like, I've never seen this. Nobody's ever thought about doing it like this in this way. And I mean, yeah, I got, I got, I bought that, the DVD. And that one, that one went in the uh, garage sale, though. <laughs> I really quickly want to jump in because I saw a preview today for a new show on Netflix or movie on Netflix. Did you guys see this with Amy Schumer, her new show, her new movie? No. Uh, her love interest? Sarah? Michael, Michael Sarah. Sarah. What? Looking really? ruggishly handsome with like what? a beard what? and shit. I mean, he's still Michael Sarah, so he's kind of is it CGI? Like is the awkward. beard CGI? <laughs> he's skinny and awkward. Interesting. It's real patchy. But uh, I watched the preview today, and I was like, I'm watching this fucking movie. Yeah, I'm okay. watching that. Because uh, I, I mean, no matter how you feel about Schumer and her comedy and whatever she's it is, I think she's hilarious. really hilarious. She's, she's really, oh, yeah. I think she's yeah. really funny. Whether whether you think she steals jokes or what, I think she's funny. And, as I, fuck. and I think Sarah is one of the problems for for Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Is that there's a lot of people that just don't like Michael Sarah like the way he presents himself and so I, I imagine love having that worldview yeah imagine not liking michael Sarah of all fucking people dude That's so like- so i i will admit i have not seen last night in soho and i have not seen the documentary that edgar wright did before that which is called meet the sparks which is about a a band from the uh early 70s like i like kind of avant-garde weird music and i legitimately had never heard of the sparks but when you put on one of their songs that came out in like the early 1970s and you listen you're like this cannot be from the early 70s like it's just it's so weird so strange it's like it's 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 almost queen but almost earlier than queen doing some like kind of almost bohemian rhapsody type stuff so it's like it's they're they're an interesting band i need to watch the documentary it's a very uh cool band they're just called sparks it was some brothers and and it's very interesting music. So, like they had the same mother and father. I assume so. All right, I just want to make sure where we're. Going I assume with that. so. But yeah, it's it's. I, I got to check it out because Edgar Wright doing a documentary. I'm like, I, I actually tried to get my brother to go watch it. I was like, I think it's playing at the theater. We should go check it out. He's like, oh, I can't make it, so I ended up passing on it. But I, is I gotta, Andrew big Edgar Wright too? Uh, no. Oh really? I tried to watch him. I tried to show him Sp- Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> and he just was not having it. Oh, it's man. because you liked it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he just was not getting the vibe. I mean, I don't know. I it's thought because he was he, it. It, Andrew, it's Brad's same. brother is famous. It's best saying that I've ever heard from him. He's got a lot of sayings. <laughs> but the best one I've ever heard was, I only watch movies I've already seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah which so he certain. hadn't seen it before. That's why I that's, didn't like that's it. That's part of his problem. That's, that is part of his problem. <laughs> All right. Let's body bag some shit real quick. Let's get some body bags out. I'm unzipping. I'm going to start off just because. You know what? My body bag is the world's end. Uh, as far as the Cornetto Chili, uh, Cornetto Chili, I can't even talk. Oh, so you and Scott have the same uh, opinion on that one. Cornetto Trilogy, it's it's just the least, it's my least favorite. Man. I don't I don't think there's anybody that would put it in their first place of that trilogy. Um, and most of the people I talk to usually put it at the bottom. And it's weird because what they try to do is they try to make Simon Pegg the, the kind of more like, silly like aggressive kind of wild one and nick frost they turn into kind of like the quiet kind of calmer one i mean it, it kind of swaps a little bit halfway through but it's like one of those things where it's like you just i don't know it just hasn't had the same vibe it's got some funny moments there's some some clever things but it just does not have the staying power that the other two do Shaun of the dead and hot fuzz i'll watch those 100 times over before i watch the world's end again i don't know that's my that's my body bag I mean, I you know, I, it's like it's, it's a weird one because like I don't have anything that I I could make something up, but there's nothing I like hate about this movie. Maybe my body bag is like my lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, like I think I think I I like it, um, but for some reason I I, I think I, I mean I guess if I'm just gonna be sort of like real straight up about it, I don't particularly like things that are are like really trying to be different, just to be different. And I don't think that's exactly what's going on here, but I guess I don't give it the extra credit for that. And so for me, there's a miss a little bit f- f- with it that like d- it doesn't make it. It doesn't. I just doesn't resonate with me in the same way. Like I, 
I'm much more interested in something that is has like a really, really good story that's well told and develops characters and relationships really well. And that's just not what this movie does. So it's not up my alley. Um, and I think I'm the wrong audience for it. So I body bag myself. That's what I love about <laughs> Nate and I being best friends is the fact that like that's he, the opposite our, of Brad's. We reaction. can both we can have absolutely os- op- uh, opposite reactions on 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 a lot of different pop culture items, and yet. I understand where he's come from. He understands where I'm coming from, yeah, oh and, yeah. and we get along. That's the way we we make, we make him I work. I talk tons of shit about him behind his back. As soon as he Problem. said that, I was like, "Man, these guys are exact opposites. No wonder they're best buddies." <laughs> 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 All right, uh, uh, Nick, what do you got for a body bag? Um, I threw. I got like, I guess, two little ones. But I talked about earlier the the loud sound editing. <laughs> If you have little children. Is that Claire's body bag or your body bag? Uh, Mine now. (laughs) Um, But yeah, Claire probably doesn't appreciate it. Um, (laughs) But no, I I joke about that. But then, uh, but it actually, it's, it's crazy, like drastic, the change in volume. And then it's a little too long. It's a little too long. They drag out, they drag out the end for an extra like eight to 10 minutes. They did not need, they didn't, I was thinking about it. Why did the musket dude have to come out of nowhere and blow, blow uh, you know Nick Frost away in the whole explosion? Why did any of that really have to happen? Zach, I, when Nick Frost ended up living anyways, and there was no big laughs from it. No, and it was yeah. just the, the old mind fucker goes anyways off. who was yeah, watching like, the screens, and we were waiting for. Nobody was really caring about the mine really anyways, and they that thing is in rubble. Yeah, it was like, it was a vicious and, explosion. There should have been a lot more deaths, I'm assuming. Right, but right. the fact that you're only worried about uh, is Nick Frost dead, but he he's magically alive. Yeah. I I agree. I think that that was unnecessary. The ending with him getting spiked through and then all the the, the mug shots of them. That's a perfect spot to end. And you just I have thought a happy credits moment. were coming. Yes. yes, I almost turned it off. <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> when they were showing the mug shots, I was like, "This is the perfect credit sequence. This yeah. the f- oh, credits dude, are going to yes. come over it right now." Yeah, they and then did there not. Was another twenty minutes. I mean, a couple 20? things on that. The the fact that he has the thing stabbed through him okay. and they just cut it off, and he's just like, "Oh, I need ice cream." The fact they kept it in there was funny. I agree. <laughs> yes. they I that loved in that there. he was still alive. It gave me vibes of Fight Club when fucking yeah. Edward Norton oh, shoots yeah, himself in the face, cheek. Yeah. and he's fucking still alive. Yeah. The, yeah. the only thing I that I'll say about that last scene is it does allow Simon Pegg to have that moment where he becomes one of the guys. So, and so that's the only that's what I love about it and then So I think you, know. you do what you do is you do that scene where they're filling out the paperwork, you skip the part where he gets sh- where and his then friend you show gets the shot and you that. show the bomb go off Fair and enough. then you just end the movie with all the montage of all the people getting their different mug shots and yeah. then that's the end of the movie, right? Yeah. But they had to they they fucking fellowship of the ringed it. <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. The, extended ending the fucking worst example in history of dragging the end of a movie out because they Best were like truth. hey this movie's over we got an hour and a half left are you guys ready <laughs> i will say go back to the mine though when when they first discover the mine it's out there and they think it's a dud and like they're just both the kicking it, it. Consistently. <laughs> it's hit with a shotgun it's like it's done it's done <laughs> i've got a i i i i work at a chemical plant and i've got a uh, like a 60 something year old engineer that carries around either a flashlight or a wrench or whatever it is and this dude is notorious for being like we'll be like hey you know this this isn't working correctly and he'll just fucking kick it as hard as he can or like smack it with something and i'm just like what are we doing (laughs) are we trying to break it more like how is this helping so we fix things man oh fucking wild it's like an old zenith Uh, tv but i digress i'm gonna very quickly do my body you got the last the last bag is unzipped wait so i got i got (laughs) i'm unzipped i'm waiting for you and uh (laughs) my body my body bag is gonna be as i've said previously on the podcast i spent some time in my younger days as a uh, undercover shoplifter catcher or whatever you want to call me <laughs> i uh, i caught shoplifters and uh the dude what's his name nick peg nick simon simon, simon peg simon having peg. a nice chase simon peg breaking every rule of catching shoplifters <laughs> you cannot approach a person in a store even if they have every bit of merchandise in your whole store inside of their jacket and inside of their pockets <laughs> if they haven't walked out of your store they have not committed a crime 
<laughs> and dude, I just like got super anxious as soon as he walked You're up like, to that weirdo don't guy. Do it. I was like, no, you can't talk to him yet, dude. He hasn't walked out of the store. He's gonna get fired. He's gonna lose his job, and fucking Target's gonna get sued. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's Good my body. Stuff. Good. Solid, solid. All right, folks, we've we've got the uh, the shag snag. We've closed up those body bags, so let's go on to cameo. Kick a cameo. Exactly. That's my new. That's, that's my new tagline. That's, that's how it goes. Then. <laughs> that's all the bumpy you need. Right there. Yeah, we're just. That's where we're going to record when we uh, go over to Scotch Bex Cantina uh, uh, pretty soon here. So cameo, we had a couple former formers former lease. <laughs> couple farmers, <laughs> farmers, <laughs> them farmers out there on the cameo. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a bit came was like we got to pivot man nobody's fucking buying our shit let's go to farmers let's find the most interesting Scott's farmers Scott's got a big world. following on cameo <laughs> so uh there was uh the uh the station clerk the guy that says like they don't tell me anything and like he's kind of like uppity about it but there's two of them it's the same actor playing two different characters that's bill bailey he's a an english comedian Used to be on Cameo, no longer. Who does he think he is? Lindsay Lohan in The Parent Trap? Uh, Jesus. Yeah, I, know. I know, playing two roles like that. Wait, so that so that wasn't an actual pair of twins? That was one guy they did use special That effects. is one guy they uh, yeah, cause they both show up. such a weird choice that, that they even yeah. took the time to. Yeah, yeah. it's random. <laughs> it's just like Only special one, effects in the whole moment. movie is that. <laughs> and the, the, the female cop, uh, Olivia Coleman, mm. she is uh, formerly on Cameo as well. So those two are not there. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pissed because I would totally pay money for Olivia Coleman. No, you would think I like love you would think I'm setting this bar low. Like, oh, those two weren't on it. So who actually is? Take a guess. Who is on cameo? Nick Frost. Nick Frost. No way. Wow. Belloc from Indiana Jones. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Belloc from Indiana Jones is a good guess, but these two are right. I'm Nick gonna... Frost is on. Really? What? Oh my god. Ooh, now I want to know. Oh, What's Nick his business Frost. price? Let's go. And he is currently running, and and uh, yeah, there's there's I think there's two separate bids here. So let's start off with his personal. You want Nick Frost to say something nice to your your auntie? So wh- what are we what are we gonna pay for a little Nick Frost action? Make Nick go first because he's got the same name. Two hundred. Right. Oh shit. shit! Nick put his. I was gonna say one fifty. So, but now I'm, right. I'm gonna well, say one fifty. You, yeah. you said yeah, one fifty. Yeah, yeah. okay. We're, we're I was gonna that. say it, so I said it. I, I say one eighty nine, one eight nine. Damn, Nick went two hundred. Just fucking. Zach s- somehow always sneaks in here on the very end. He has to make the last his pick. dick in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> you go two hundred one. My germs. One ninety nine. Uh, I am gonna go one dollar. I mean, he's kind of a big deal with these British, right? So I'm gonna go two hundred one. You f- is this in pounds or in dollars? Uh this is all in. I'm going in, in euros. Metric. This is in dollars. <laughs> Um, the correct answer there was two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, Zach with another win, another big win, win for Zach. Zach. Another win, shit that another don't count. fucking can't win lose. for Zach. He can't lose shit that doesn't win. Anything. <laughs> All right, business. If we wanted him to shout out the BVK pod, how much are we paying? Oh, it's got to be eight hundred. Oh no, twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. No, eight hundred. Eleven hundred. Forty-five hundred. That's a different. Forty-five hundred. <laughs> oh shit! Um, I'm gonna go in the. I'm gonna say twenty-five hundred. Jesus Christ! So Nick Frost, two hundred fifty dollars for that personal cameo for the business cost. Ten G. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Ten. Oh. Are you for real? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not fucking around, y'all. Yeah. Oh. Damn, bro. Ten G. Nick Frost. We could get Brett Favre like five <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, pretty Jesus much. Jesus Christ. So yeah, so that's cameo today, but it's not often we have a movie where one of the main stars is is on cameo. So yeah. I, was I was gonna say, is it like the doctor guy? I know. I was yeah. surprised, and I, I I probably didn't get through all of the townspeople. But, but it's exactly because like his I am. DB outside of these is not huge. Yeah. It, like he's not in a lot of super no, prominent stuff. True. There's I one that's think it, it makes it so that he's you damn. Know. But he doesn't have like he doesn't have like a catchphrase though. Like, there's one of two good. things happening. He's either getting a divorce or he's got like some sort of like crazy drug <laughs> habit tax that we issues don't know or about. Yeah, like exactly. Issues. He's doing some he's doing some drugs or he's doing some Wesley Snipes tax evasion. I will say that I usually try to put the names in of the top characters to, to try to search and then. After that, usually I'll put the name of the movie in. So I put in Hot Fuzz, and <laughs> it's a bunch of these pictures all start showing up, and in the middle was Nick Frost. All the others are for, like, some hot 
a reality show where it's like hot people trying to fuck each other. Like it's like just oh, a yeah, whole it's, mess. It's a reality show of about all pubes. these like it's called hot like <laughs> model people, <laughs> like just looking at each other and like they're all just like handsome and 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 sexy. And then it's right right in the middle is Nick Frost, hot fuzz. All the rest say like it's like hot. I don't even know what the fuck it's called, but some like some Temptation Island. It's shit, that kind of shit. Too Absolutely. hot to handle, bro. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it's just Nick Frost in the middle of a bunch of like just. All ripped and and chiseled uh, men and women who are all just looking hot. So. Nick, Nick, what do you know about Temptation Island, bro? I heard you throw that out casually in conversation. You watch that shit? No, I don't. One he, was, he was up. I do watch shows. some. He was real, up for season three, TV, but then he got that, married. Though. Oh, I, I might have watched season. If he if he wouldn't have got married, he was going to be on season three. Nick would tempt the fuck out of some bitches. <laughs> <laughs> he's, all, he's like, I might have been on it. I might have been on Temptation Island. He'd be like, <laughs> fucking, this dude looks tempting as fuck. Oh man. <laughs> All right, folks, let's move to the streaming <laughs> recommendations. I, I got a feeling what I know Zach's going to recommend. What do you got? Hereditary? <laughs> Temptation <laughs> Island. <laughs> Season oh, three. It, no, it's season oh. one, bro. Season one. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I want to yeah. recommend that reality show we were talking about the other day, that Top Sphincter, son. Uh, that's Sphinct? <laughs> uh, hang on to that O-ring, oh, I've kid. Heard, I've heard a few people mention that, and they're just like, what is that all about? I'm like, you know. Whatever. Just a little fucking fun enema humor night, at night. the holidays. Keep that O-ring tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's on the poster. That's on the poster. Night, it comes night. on at 11 p.m. Night, night, keep your O-ring tight. That is fucking Nick. Your kids are going to have the greatest like nursery rhymes when they grow up. They're going to be like, your parents didn't tell you that? <laughs> Uh, oh, if, you, if you haven't noticed before, when we start ending Bev's uh, episodes, that's the drunkest time. That's when if, you, if you're not listening all the way through, you really need to. Because that's when you're things start going off the rails. Treat. And if you're into that kind of like just shit show, just keep following. Just, you go literally go that extra mile to get to that hour and forty five minute mark. Go to the bottom of the tank. So, <laughs> so my streaming recommendation is going to be a movie that I haven't seen. Can I do that? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because I, you lose points, but yeah. So, yeah. so dude, for so long, <laughs> I, I, I've got you negative, lose a win. I got negative points it. already, bro. I <laughs> cost you a win. To do I'm it, living yes. on borrowed time already. Uh, so, I the preview for uh, last night in Soho is like one of the dopest previews that I've seen, and I've been trying to watch this movie for like two freaking months, and it's. Twenty dollars to yeah, rent. It's gonna it. be it's gonna be rental very soon. I think. I think it might be this week or when this pod comes out, but it's like in February. I thought. Yeah. Um. So yeah, once that thing's available for three ninety nine on iTunes, I think that we should all go see it because man, dude, and and I gotta say too, Anna Taylor Joy is like one of my favorites. Well, uh, and the other actress is from uh, Jojo Rabbit. That, yeah. That, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, who's amazing? Who I, plays I like her, her mirror name. image? But yeah. yeah. She's like, I think she's the main girl, and Anya Taylor Joy is the mirror image. Right. right. And right. Anya Taylor Joy in in the movie The Witch, which if you haven't seen, uh, fucking God, dude. Or the Queen's, I, Queen's I, I will say, yeah. Queen's, oh, yeah. It's, obviously, it's, it's yeah, had mixed yeah. reviews. It's had mixed reviews, but I'm still interested to see what I want to see on, it on a horror bad. kind of scary movie is going to be like. So I don't think so. I think it's a perfect example of a movie where you watch the trailer and you're like, this seems like a horror movie, and then you watch the movie and you're like, okay, and where's the? Horror? So maybe it mixes you up. Yeah, and, and that's I, why I people think, have negative but, feelings. It gives okay. me Black Swan vibes. Like wow. same yeah. If it feeling, can be Black bro. Swan, even though I don't love Aronofsky, I'd fucking be down for that because I like Black Swan. So, all right, who who else is recommending something? What do we got? So, for this one, kind of reminded me, like the, the the version of this movie that I probably liked better, and it's not you know it's not quite right, but there's a couple of uh, movies with Jesse Eisberg, Eisenberg, Eisberg. Eisen Eisenberg Eisenberg um, that are the first one the one I like the best of them is 30 minutes or less uh, is that the one that. with the neck the neck bombs it's is it Camille Nanjiani or is it is it with uh, uh, or Kristen Stewart it runs with Kristen Stewart no 30 seconds less is the bomb's gonna go off yeah. is it Danny it's, McBride is Danny McBride, Danny McBride is this yeah. Aziz, Aziz Ansari yes uh, that's what it is Aziz yeah um, I've seen that so so that one I like quite a bit the other one is American Ultra the one, is the other one you're thinking of that that's one the one is, with Kristen Stewart I like okay. Kristen Stewart and, and I like yeah. that one quite a bit too but I would say of the two I prefer the 30 minutes or less it's a little bit I mean but I, I think of that as I mean it's, it's kind of 
you know, it has a little bit of that parody feel to it. It's kind of making fun of some of these things, but it plays it straight enough that it has its own story. So it kind of has that same, like, runs in that same lane, but it's it's very American, where this one is very British. Gotcha. And uh, it, you cannot, you can you can rent it cheaply lots of places, but you can't stream it for free. I got to ask you guys, since to, to freaking just be here even longer, what do you guys think of Case do? What are your guys' thoughts? I really like her. I, I like her in a ton of stuff. People hate her so much. I don't know how you guys feel about it. We kind of talked about it when we did Adventureland on the uh, on the back pods, but I'm just curious what your thoughts are. What do you think, Nick? I, I like Kristen Stewart. Yeah, yeah she doesn't bug me. Like It seems like she really people turns hate people her so off much. the wrong I just way, was curious if, any, if we had any people I, that really hated her. I, I really liked her in Panic Room when she was younger. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, I had forgotten that she was in that. Yeah, she was the daughter. And, Fincher, right? And, and Isn't that Fincher? It was Fincher. Yeah, and and it was. She, I think she had a really good performance. She had you know diabetes and you know she, oh, she yeah, was yeah, yeah. sick and the whole movie. And so um, I thought she was great in that. She's playing Chris uh, Princess Diana in a movie and, yeah. and nominated it's for Spencer. Best Actress. Is she Spencer, for that? Yeah, okay, one hundred percent. And and I think people think she's got a shot. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen Spencer, but me either. I liked her. I, in I think. A, I think a lot of the complaints are literally just Twilight, in which I mean, what are you going to do with that? I mean, Agreed. It's not going on. Yeah, I, I haven't watched Twilight, but I saw some clips and yeah. Yeah, I think they're also just. She has a very. There, there are in a number of movies. She has a kind of a very similar affection. Mis- yeah, it's kind of like like a little bit of a, a, a melancholy or you know misanthropic kind of you know char- character you know personality. But I, I I like her enough. I, I don't know. It, it it works well enough for me that that that's never distracting. Okay. I have a theory about her that uh, like people that don't like her have never been around like really cool people because she's like the <laughs> ultimate like I'm too cool for school. Well, all actors actors have a certain thing that they bring to the parts. Like any you know female actors bring their own thing, comedic I agree. or dramatic. And Meryl Streep brings certain things like they all have and Kristen Stewart happens to bring that certain I think she that brings mood that to like the parts too cool that I, for school I don't vibe mind that is it a at all. thing in the real world so like that the runaways, people don't connect with. Mm-hmm. Runaways, did you see any of that? I no. think it was Runaways where they where yeah. like, Joan like, Jett the girl right? band she, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. she's Joan Jett yeah, yeah. I did she's badass that. she's gonna be in uh, David Cronenberg's next movie Crimes oh. of the Future it looks oh, like she's really? gonna star of that and it sounds like kind of a weird strange Pin- movie but David Cronenberg makes weird movies I was gonna so. say is Pinhead in it? I'm right <laughs> I mean Crash is, is that was a very strange it was NC-17 and we went and saw it in the theater thinking like ooh NC-17 and <laughs> It's just a fucked up movie about people like fucking after car. Crashes. I was gonna say a little car fucking. Yeah. You seen uh, Titan yet? I Takes car Titan. fucking to a whole new level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Titan. Um, you, you, Titan. Nick. Titan. Oh. Nick. It what means you... to fuck a car. Okay. Sorry. Titan. What do you recommend? <laughs> <to do? laughs> what are you into, Nate? I'm into Titan. Titan. <laughs> Taint play. <laughs> I'm big on taint play. Ain't, ain't no taint. <laughs> um, Shaun of the Dead, 2004. Hey, Jamie, yeah. Hulu, Amazon. The, the first gonna, of yeah. the Cornetto trilogy. Um, I'm going to go with first Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Um, it's available on, on the Peacock. Get get that cock. Um, <laughs> Spot, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. It's not like Hot Fuzz at all, but it is Edgar Wright. It's my favorite movie of his. It's just... It's interesting. It combines music. It combines video games. It combines like fast paced. It's got action. It's just a very clever movie. If you've been watching Succession and you like Kieran Culkin, uh, that Kieran Culkin, he is uh, uh, great in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. He's just got a great part. A lot of silly humor. Check that movie out. Um, the movie that I want to recommend that is not streaming is Amelie because it's got the same type of clever. Um, it's, it's got a European feel to it. It's very clever. It uses music. It uses, uh, fast cuts. It's got a little narration and it just kind of like guides you through this, like very interesting little story. It reminds me a little bit of Edgar Wright. So, uh, that's the movie I'm recommending. That's not streaming. I don't know where you can find that right now. Unless you got the D. How do you spell it? A M E L I E. And then there's a I've heard umlaut in there or something or whatever those things are called. <laughs> I don't know. If that I think it's an, a, it was an accent. Yeah. There Maybe is somewhere in there. It's yeah. French, but uh, 
But yeah, it's uh, Not Audrey Tattoo, much. who's just an uh, amazing actress. So that's it. All right. Um, Scott, you got something for streaming? It hasn't happened yet, but on Thursday, there's going to be a draft, and everything that these guys pick, <laughs> watch that. Okay. You're, 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 is that a premonition? That's a premonition. That's a Scotch Beck premonition. Because Scot- I've been thinking about it, and there's just so many movies that if you like a good, fun parody. Oh, you're talking like, about the parody draft? Yeah. Fuck the, yeah. The whole, the whole genre. That's my favorite genre, and I know these guys are going to fuck it up, and, um, but, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, we'll see. But yeah, no. There's so many amazing. Like, I won't. I won't name them because I don't want to give these guys any hints on what to draft. But yeah, there's so many amazing. I movies assume out there's there. gonna be some great movies, yeah. and I think I, I bet I bet a couple of us do really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's probably a couple of you that do really <laughs> well. <laughs> we shall assholes. See. All right, what are we doing? Let's go on to our reshelf. Uh, this is where you're gonna take a movie. You're gonna take it from the comedy and put it in the horror section, or you're going to just rewrite the ending. Make it the way you want it to be. So what do we got for reshelf or uh, alternate endings? Anybody got something for us? I got a I got an alternate ending where they go the prestige route. So they try and make you think that maybe they're going to do two people, and then it ends up being like 20 people, or, uh, which, which I dug. But I thought maybe they go the prestige route where there's a twin – of the douchey uh, grocery store guy, and he just can't figure out why he can't why he can't like crack this case. And this guy's got such an airtight alibi, and then that's that's how they figure it oh, out. So it's Timothy Dalton twins. Because okay. I think it, I think this came out before Prestige, right? Uh, this was two thousand seven. I think Prestige was two thousand four. Oh, so maybe maybe my timelines are right fucked. Before. So maybe they I copied think you're them wrong about that. Yeah, so that's that's not going to work. But no, I I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I would say my my only uh, just alternate ending is, and we talked about this earlier, is that I really think that they did not need the extra dude coming out with the musket and the whole landmine or the sea mine thing. Like, oh yeah, I agree. I think we needed to end the movie before that, and I think it's better. I just don't think you needed to have the the whole jump in front of the shot and. I mean that's a that is a staple. I guess that's the final like little cherry on the on the top of the uh, the parody cake because you always have like the uh, um, lethal weapon jumping in front of the the bullet and stuff. I mean that kind of stuff happens all the time in those buddy cop movies. So maybe maybe that's why he threw it in there. But I just think it was unnecessary. Anybody else? I don't have a rewrite or anything, but I'm just wondering what this movie is like if Guy Ritchie directs it. I think it's very hmm. very similar. Very similar. It's like it, yeah. His yeah. cuts, right? The cuts are very snatched. A lot, lot more. They're just, sl- lot more, they're, they're just a lot more slow motion. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot <laughs> more slow motion. You have that really awesome like Irish fiddle that he'll put in mm-hmm. to movies that really pumps you up. Yeah, really, I'd say, I'd say really Edgar Wright's jacked. very much more into like pop pop music than than Guy Ritchie. Yeah. I like. I really like it. Right. I just, just thought, because I didn't have any reshelf or anything like that. I just thought. Brad Pitt plays the old guy that you can't understand what the fuck he's saying. That would have been fun. Just him just in the background, just a very small part. <laughs> yes. That's good shit. I like that. There we go. Scott, anything to recommend? What was that? Streaming, reshelf. Um, um, I, wait, I just fucked up. Yeah, you're sorry. Already, you're already 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 were, we were you <laughs> here? Were you here about three minutes ago? Alter, you alternate, alternate ending reshelf, Scott. I got I, this movie's perfect, and yeah. it doesn't need to be changed. There That's we go. Opinion. So it is. It's. It. I will say it's not my favorite movie, obviously, but for what it is, it's fucking good. Like yeah. it's. I liked it. Yeah, it, yeah I mean, I, I will say it. And this is why I body bagged myself. Because like in this movie, I'm the problem, right? <laughs> right. In the in the relationship between me and the movie, it's I'm I'm toxic. It, it, honestly, I, again, I'll go back and just say it just deserves like to me for it to get really good. It it did take a few. I, I enjoyed it the first time, and then I started to love it every time I'd watch it after. Yeah, so that, I, that's just my. Th- and I agree that it does exactly what it's. I mean, it's trying to do a thing, and it does it well. Yeah. You know, like it's just totally. just is not doing my thing. And you guys mentioned two parts that. I didn't notice upon my first watch right. that maybe when I watch it again, I would notice and think it was funny. Those are the sure. little, there's so many little Quick lines quips, that, yeah. that are even like, even jokes that are said under their breath. I would probably have to do a Brad the and do the uh, subtitles. Well, and even the yeah. Andrews, uh, like we didn't help. talk about the Andrews the and <laughs> those things like kill me. Cause the I watched guys? like yeah. the, the gag reel on this movie is pretty funny is, is really funny. And those guys are really funny cause yeah. just their faces the one with the mustache, well, the one with the thicker mustache, <laughs> right? Uh, 
his just like his pissed off like confused ace. It it, it, oh. it cracked up Simon Pegg like multiple times. At one point, he like goes out of the camera, and like, the other guys like so, kind of fading out, and then he comes back. That's, in. <laughs> that's 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 a gif. That's that's a that's a gif you oh, can really? use. And I uh, there was a uh, I actually tweeted out there was some some like hot little like pod type thing, and they were like, hey, what 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 are you recording today? So I posted that with that gif of like, oh, oh we're really? going deep in the hot fuzz. <laughs> All right. But there's, it's just great, yeah, because he goes off and then that one's standing there, and then he comes back, he pops back yeah, in. That's <laughs> like, so awesome. They have some great lines in it too. Yeah. I mean, just yeah, dude. One uh, of my one of my favorite scenes with them is when they're talking about it's like, you you do know there's more guns in the country than in the city, right? And then he's like, oh yeah, who? He's like, well, everyone and their mama's packing around here. Like who? Farmers. Who else? Farmers' moms. Farmers' moms. <laughs> yeah. Everyone and their mom. And it's just those little, subtle little lines that are just, you miss. But then they do the callback when he first shows up. Uh, he's coming back into the town to clean up. Yeah. And, and that, that farmer dude, he, he, he knocks him out. Or he, or he hits him with the car, and he's like, "Mom!" And then she comes up with the she shotgun. Has the gun. Yeah. So, I mean, they definitely do the little callbacks. And like there's that. also the scene where it gets a little naked, gunny, where he's like, "Mother!" And it go, turns, and it's like a whole bunch of moms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, so that's another good example. Yeah. Where it's like that's like they tiptoe toward the same as the like flip over the fence. It's like totally. they tip toward to toward the truly absurd, and then they just back right away. Exactly. Yeah. Which again, you know, I think that that's a thing. And Walking it, that it, thin it line works, works well. All right, folks. Well, we got through Hot Fuzz. I think we had a, a pretty good time here. Um, now we're going to be drafting the uh, the best spoof or parody movies that we can think of. So I like it. Best parody or spoof. And I know, I think last week I mentioned uh, satire. I think we're going to stay away from that. Yeah. I kind of just said that. I didn't mean that necessarily. I was trying to think of the words. Glad, and at the time, you, you were just, just saying words. And I'm glad. I'm words, whatever the fuck. I mean, comes Brad, out it's mouth. really good that we're having this conversation before the draft. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we live in that Inception world here uh, <laughs> on the podcast. And Time is a we flat just kind of we just kind of jump into different timelines, you know. Brad we, is our resident, our resident fucking <laughs> Nolan. Resident <here>. Nolan. <laughs> All right, so take care, folks. See you on Thursday. Uh, buy buy some BVK IPA. Go over to Last Call if you're if you're in the local areas. Um, Message us if you want shirts. We'll, we'll have yeah. check out our socials. I'm gonna put. We're gonna we're, there 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 are by now. Uh, pictures of shirts up you can direct message us on twitter instagram facebook or you can email us at bez video kingdom at gmail.com and we will coordinate with you to mail you or uh, work a drop-off pickup for uh, one of our shirts we're going to be selling all of our shirts we got a bunch of cool tank tops we're also going to throw a link on that post to some uh, scotch Beck t-shirts yeah. so uh, you guys could be all bvk scotch backed out Hey, and just share it with your friends, man. We're, we've thing. got a good thing going here. I feel like a lot of people are enjoying and, and just kind of participating. Uh, we have friends of ours that come up just like, oh, why didn't you choose this or that? And like, and people on, do it on the socials as well. So it's like, yeah, just, we're just like, mix it up. We're like, fuck you. Don't ch- fucking try and judge my <laughs> well, draft. Well, I mean, Which is best. The best is that we're so not like that. We're just like, oh, yeah, we're <laughs> fucking dumb. Like, we should have thought about yeah. that, but we're kind of just doofuses. Oh, yeah, so. I would pick that, you dumbass. That's what you say, <laughs> Well, I mean, but seriously, the, the number one thing, like anytime somebody comments and it's like, oh, we really like what you're doing or, you know, or just, you know, want to support you. The number one thing I say is like, hey, just think of the five friends that you know that are like movie fans or podcast fans and send them send them a text message from you. Tell them what, that you like our thing. Tell, do a group text. So then when they go listen, you can all like talk about it in, in your group thread. But just tell your friends about us. That, that we, we, we're not like. We're not out there, you know, paying big advertising dollars or, or pushing this stuff. We depend on you guys to tell our people about us, and that's how we get our listeners up. So just, you know, take take two minutes, think about it, send a text message. That helps us out. I and mean, we're, we're basically stepping in where uh, as Joe Rogan disappears and is removed we're trying from to, Spotify, we're, trying to fill we're that pretty void. much going to fill that void. Yeah. So Oh, we are. Yeah. We're filling the Rogan void. That's, that's All right. right. That's and right. Our, <laughs> next, our next <laughs> guest is going to be fucking <laughs> Sarah Palin. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> he's to, Damn, I had he's a funny to sneak that in there. I had a funny joke about how even if I forgot what I was gonna say, but it was something about like even if your friends don't listen to the pod, you can at least screenshot them texting you back and being like, "What the fuck is this shit you're sending me?" <laughs> and then send that to us because we want to see that too. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. They're like, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These guys start their podcast with yelling woe into the microphone. <laughs> Jesus so Christ. So clever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, we'll see you Thursday. Uh, enjoy your week. And uh, thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Start